Hello, everybody. I am Brother Luke. Welcome to this fun fellowship Friday night for the Church of the Eternally Secure, also known as CES. Well, I don't know about you, but I can use use a lot of fun tonight. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, and uh, some of you are not aware of this, but uh, we have a new member of the, the Friday night panel that's joining us tonight for the first time, and that's uh, Sister Heather. So uh, uh, everybody, let's give her a nice welcome. I'm eager to have her uh, in this discussion. Uh, I've talked to her numerous times on the phone privately, but uh, so I, I know she has a lot to offer uh, the conversation. Uh, so let's start off by saying hello to the congregation. And let's start with Sister Heather. Good evening, everyone. Hope everyone's doing good tonight. I think we are. I think, uh, except for some minor problems, uh, I think we're all doing quite well. All right, then. Uh, and Sister Angel, why don't you say ne hello next? Mm -hmm. Okay, if that's not possible, how about just Sorry, delete guys. it? I was trying to unmute and I accidentally hung up. So, uh, okay. hey guys, I'm uh, uh, glad good to be here. I needed this. So, uh, good to see everybody. Okay. All right. Thank you. And Sister Lisa. Praise the Lord, beloved of the Most High God, in the mighty name of King Jesus. I'm glad to be here with everyone this evening. Uh, Sister Angel was telling us some of the male troubles she was having before we started on the broadcast. And no, I don't mean males as in M-A-L-E-S. I mm, mean male yeah. trouble as in U.S. Postal Service. Mm. So uh, I'm sorry, Sister Angel. I heard the trouble in your voice. I get it. I believe yeah. it. I understand <laughs> it. It's very frustrating. And then um, nice to have you here with us tonight, Sister Heather. I'm glad to see you here. I've, I've watched a lot of your comments in the chat. So I'm looking forward to what you have to share this evening and your thoughts and ideas. That's going to be awesome. And then we'll all just continue to pray for Brother Luke that his jokes get better and better. <laughs> ah, <laughs> yes. We certainly need a lot of prayers for that. No doubt. And shout yeah. out to Brother Ben back there in the background hanging out trying not to answer any <laughs> questions. <laughs> uh, well, let me say this. and uh, You may think this is another attempt at humor, but uh, as soon as I hear your voice, Lisa, it feels like my ears are getting a massage. It's so soothing, the sound of your voice. Yep. Well, praise the Lord, guys. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Yes. All right. And speaking of uh, Brother Ben, why don't you say hello to everybody? I also want you to, to uh, scathe your ears. Um, oh, uh, it ears <laughs> hurt now. Oh, no. <laughs> It's good to be here, everyone. I'm uh, very much looking forward to this. I think we have a good set of questions lined up. Um, and it's awesome to have Heather with us, her debut. So looking forward to the fellowship. Uh -huh. Awesome. Uh, okay. And let me see, look at the chat room here and see who's in there. Um, right, Sister Heather, uh, why don't you uh, uh, take on that uh, project we were talking about to see if... Uh, if uh, they want to be uh, enjoying the panel tonight. Uh, I'm already okay. on it. Okay, good. And then let me know if, that, if that's going to happen. Um, One second. I'll take care of it. Okay. Uh, all right. So looks like we've got uh, a, a lot of the regular saints. I, I don't recognize any. Oh, LMT. I don't recognize that name. So, uh, LMT, if you're new here, welcome. Lamp also. And uh, if you are not new here, and I'm don't I'm making a mistake. I apologize, but uh, we we just want to make sure that if you are new, that you're uh, you're welcomed. Now, of course, that's one of the things that Sister Heather and uh, Brother Hendricks. Uh, or work so hard, at, they, they manage that chat room as moderators, and uh, along with you others. Hello, Victoria. She's there too as a moderator. So, uh, all right. Well, um, Ben sent us uh, the true false uh, questions to look at earlier, and uh, I'm eager to get into that. Uh, let me say one thing 
couple of things before we get started. One, um, uh, uh, I, I'm going to be 70 years old in a, in a couple of weeks. Uh, on the 19th, by the way, that was the the November 19th is the same date as the Gettysburg Address. In case you didn't know, so you can always remember my birthday by uh, the De Gettysburg Address. And I, I want you to limit all your uh, your birthday presents to forty dollars is the maximum. I don't want to stress anybody out. I right? put too much of a burden on you. Lisa, did you get it? No, I guess not. My my joke definitely fell on. I'm, I'm sorry. Deaf ears. First off, I was reading. <laughs> I was reading oh. something in the hangout, making sure I wasn't missing anything in the back room there. And then you told a joke and it went right over my head, which is what usually happens, Luke, because your jokes are just so intellectually superior. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I, I've always thought of my jokes in that same Next way. Next level <laughs> joke. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, some some might even argue next dimension. <laughs> yeah. Well, the only reason I'm mentioning my age now uh, and the birthday uh, presence was a, definitely a joke. So don't anybody take me wrong on that. But uh uh, you're going to find out as you get older uh, that some very unfortunate thing tends to happen, and that is uh, a lot of friends and family begin to pass away. Mm. Uh, the older you get, the more frequent you realize that uh, there's another one, another one, another one. Well, my wife uh, just was notified today that uh, a close friend of hers that she worked with for many years here, uh, uh, Lila, uh, she just passed away. She's been in the hospital for a couple of weeks, and she finally passed away. She survived by her husband, Boyce. Uh, we haven't seen him for quite a while because uh, they've had. She has had a lot of health problems. She's gradually been going blind. By the way, she was eighty-nine. Oh. So uh, when I, um, whenever we get together with uh, Bryce and Lila. Uh, I always felt like uh, I'm the young punk of the group, you know, instead of the old man. Uh, so, but they're just wonderful, wonderful people. And uh, her passing is, uh, is, 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 we're very sad about it. But uh, I want to share one thing. Is that we were at their house one time a few years ago at a dinner party. And uh, one of the things about being busy working in Christian ministry is when, when people ask you, what have you been up to? it's a perfect opportunity to start talking about Jesus because I can say, well, I've been very busy doing my Christian ministry work. And uh, they, when I told them about it and uh, mentioned that, they were quite, quite interested. They wanted to get more details. So I told them about my street preaching and the YouTube thing and stuff. And, and uh, they, they, they uh, identified themselves as believers. Uh, and uh, so I was happy to hear that. But as, uh, as we talk, I realized that they didn't really understand and believe the actual gospel. Even though at their late age in life and after many, many years of attending church faithfully, um, they certainly have been uh, uh, interested in, in uh, Christianity. But for some reason, the real gospel has, has, uh, was never either presented or they never really understood it. Uh, and when I explained to them the gospel and they realized the, um, the beauty of it, uh, the reaction from them was just one of the most wonderful things. Uh, they, they're, everything about their, um, um, their appearance even changed. It was just the, the joy that came over them to, uh, when they realized that uh, the salvation is guaranteed to them um, by, by, because of faith in Jesus. Uh, and when they realized that they they were so happy because they and and this has happened many times to me as I'm telling people the gospel, uh, they they say, "What well, are you serious?" It says that in the Bible uh, because most people, even if they if they are Christians, uh, the real gospel uh, they 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 have no idea what the real gospel is. That's why when we say that it's the gospel is the good news. I like to say it's the shocking good news. People are shocked to hear that eternal life is, is offered to them, provided to them as a free gift without 
any works required by them uh, just simply because of faith in, in Jesus, uh, his finished work on the cross, his promise. And uh, so I remember so clearly my conversation with them, and I believe that's when they, they came to real saving faith. And uh, so now, of course, it's been a few years, uh, but now, of course, now that she's uh, with the Lord, uh, I'm, I'm just so happy I had that opportunity to make sure she understood the real gospel. But uh, her husband, uh, and it's very sad, many after, and, and he's even older than her, so I'm really quite concerned about him. So I hope everybody will pray for uh, Bryce and, and uh, the, the survivors of, of their family, for Lila and Bryce. Um, and of course, on top of that, we you already know about my wife's uh, uh, nephew, uh, or is it nephew or cousin, Matthew, who, who died a few days ago um, in Connecticut with a, it was suicide. So it just seems like there's a, that's what's been going on. Um, so those are, please pray for uh, uh, all the families of this, the survivors of these people. Um, the, if there's any other prayer uh, prayer needs or anything that anybody wants to bring up now, uh, why don't you go ahead and do that? I have one other thing I want to kind of announce before we get into the uh, topic. So uh, anybody have any prayer uh, needs that you want to uh, tell us about? I actually do. Um, I am diabetic, and one of the medications that I take has some terrible side effects that have given me an upset stomach for about two weeks now. And um, I just am not feeling well tonight at all, really. But I really wanted to be here. All right, thank you. Uh, so everybody, please pray for uh, Sister Heather's complete healing. And uh, I'm glad you're here in spite of that, though. And uh, maybe the, whole, the Holy Spirit will, uh, you'll be distracted with the Holy Spirit uh, filling you with so much joy in the conversation. You'll forget all about that. That's yeah, what, once we get going, that should yeah, happen. Yeah, that happens quite often. When you, you do have some kind of a problem. And when we start getting involved in our discussions, you forget all about everything else. Uh, okay, the other the thing I'd like to say before we get started is that uh, um, I, I've said this a few times over the last few years. So I've had to mention this. And I, I, this is something I believe is uh, very, very important. Um, and some people might think that I'm overstating this as a problem. But I believe very much that this uh, this particular problem uh, could be the um, a death blow to this congregation, uh, and it can happen suddenly. And that is if we dare to bring uh, politics into the church. Um, now, obviously, everybody listening now, if you haven't uh, um, been paying attention to politics lately, then you've probably been living in a cave. So obviously everybody is, I'm sure, engaged, and some people are, have, uh, you know, strong uh, feelings about uh, everything that's been going on with the election. Uh, so it's very tempting to want to talk about it. But uh, and 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 I'm as interested in politics as anybody here. There, I'm quite passionate about it. But what I do know is, and I'm certain of this, is that. Uh, if we were to engage in politics here in our, our church discussions, that um, uh, it would be like a, introducing a poison into the congregation. Uh, because I've seen so many friendships and, and families the last few years, and these relationships end because there there's no tolerance. Uh, you know, we've all grown up with a saying that, uh, well, don't ever talk about religion and politics. Uh, and why? Because uh, it usually leads to arguments and sometimes fights and sometimes, uh, you know, people's friendships are ruined. Uh, so a lot of times people avoid these subjects. We're not going to avoid religion. That's that's what we're here to talk about. Uh, the, the Bible, the theology, religions. Uh, but politics, there's no need to bring that in. It all, the only thing that can possibly result from it is bad, in my opinion. 
So I'm going to ask that if you're tempted to talk about it, I would find some other venue for that. There's other, um, you know, live programs you could join. There's, I'm sure there's other places that, that we could do that. But uh, please, please let's not introduce it into the, the chat room tonight. Um, all right. Um, I guess we're ready to go into the subject unless anybody wants to say anything before we move on. Okay. All right. Uh, Brother Ben. Oh, but Heather, did you uh, find out it? Uh, the invitation yeah. was sent. The, I uh, I sent the invitation, so uh, oh, we're just waiting, really. Okay. All right, then. All right. Well, let's begin. Uh, Brother Ben, how about the first uh, question? Okay. The first question is from Hendrix, um, and it is true or false. It is worse to suffer punishment from God than from men. Hmm. And was it someone on the panel that wrote it so that we they can go last or somewhere else? Oh, it was Hendrix. It was Hendrix. Oh, Hendrix. Okay. All right. So who, whoever is eager to go first, go ahead. Uh, and re would you repeat that question again? Sure. It is worse. I'm sorry. It is worse to suffer punishment from God than from men. Hmm. Okay. All right. Anybody eager to answer that one? All right. If there's no volunteers, I guess I'm I'm going to be forced to answer it first. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go. I, I mean, I'll go, but I right. just have a very quick. I, I'm kind of undecided because I, on the one hand, I would say quickly yes, in that it, it would always. I, I would much rather displease other men than I would displease God. For instance, I would rather I would rather fear the his punishment. So let's say being cowardly on the issue of the gospel for fear of of how how I might be treated of other men, right? But at the same time, it's kind of confusing because a lot of times the way he'll in a way, some you know, sometimes he'll he'll uh, he'll administer certain, you know, uh, chastisement, I guess, through through uh, other, you know, other people. Uh, you know, in your interactions, but yeah, yes, I would say, um, it, uh, at least theoretically, I would say that yes, it's worse to. I, I would be more afraid of displeasing God and risking uh, a punishment. You know, especially when it came to being, you know, uh, choosing to, to please people as opposed to pleasing my heavenly Father. Um, I would be much worried about the repercussions that might come from God than, than other people for 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 somehow uh, 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 offending them. If I know that if I know it's something that <laughs> absolutely God would want me to take a stand on. So I guess for now I'll say true, but I I don't know. I feel uh, I'm kind of confused about the question too. So, but yes, I'll just go ahead and say true. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, the nice thing about the format we're using here on Friday nights is that uh, after you answer the question, uh, you're going to get a second opportunity once we've all answered to, you know, give you a further answer. So maybe you'll think of uh, after, as you hear the others answer, yes. you'll have more to add. Yes. Uh, so I like that the way that works. A lot of times you don't have an, in, in your initial answer is, is not much, but then yes. after you've heard everybody now, all of a sudden we can't, we can't get you to stop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, I'll go next. I the idea of um, maybe let's say being afraid or uh, how is it phrased? Uh, you're more worried about God's reaction than I don't want to misstate the question. Oh, there it is. It is worse to suffer punishment from God than from men. Uh, well, my uh, my view on uh, God's punishment, or the, what the Bible calls the chastisement of the the, the believers, um, is that it's it's not a punishment as much as it is a um, a steering or a, cur a directing us away from what we're doing wrong to to moving us in a different direction. The way that uh, uh, a shepherd with his staff. Uh, he, he could use the staff to beat the sheep, uh, but I don't think that's the way God uh, chastises us. I, I, I think what he does is he will use the, 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 the staff 
to steer the sheep. So if we're going off in the wrong direction, doing something that needs to be corrected, he will somehow steer us. I used to think of it more like corporal punishment, like if you have to discipline your children, uh, maybe you give them a spanking or something or, or some kind of disciplinary action. But uh, I, I see God's chastisement differently than I, I did before. So I, I don't really think it'd be worse. Uh, I, I worry much more worried about what men would do to me than God. Uh, I mean, I know that I'm already spared uh, condemnation and, and the lake of fire and the second death. So I don't, what do I have to fear? Uh, I'm promised eternal life and God blesses me so much that I feel embarrassed, like I'm bragging about it all the time. I'm so blessed. Uh, so with with that perspective, uh, I would say I'm much more worried about suffering from men uh, than, than God. All right, who wants to go next? I'll go next. Okay. This is Lisa. Um... Well, uh, I answered undecided because it really could go either way. It depends on what we're talking about. Um, <laughs> for example, the Bible says that the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Okay, so uh, it would depend because God's, God's punishment, again, depending on how we define the word punishment, Jesus took all the, the penalty and punishment for sin upon himself. <laughs> now, sin isn't a cursed thing. This is why we always admonish people, come out of it, stay away from it, because there's consequences when you do certain things. And you may reap the ramifications of the consequences of that. Uh, and depending on what it is a person is involved in, um, they can be playing with the devil, in which case <laughs> there might be ramifications for that. Okay, ramifications for that. So uh, it depends on what we're talking about. God's judgment or punishment, if it's his child, is going to be measured. <laughs> so, you know, I keep telling people he's not on a search and destroy mission. He's on a search and rescue mission. So he's not out to destroy man. And he, that's that's not God. That's another God. That's not the Lord. So what is it we're talking about? If the Lord has chastised someone, he's told you, stop doing stuff, stop doing stuff, stop doing stuff, stop doing stuff. Then, yeah, I mean, he, God don't miss. When he come for you, he going to get you and it's going to land. So, you know, <laughs> uh, is it is it is he somebody to be played with? No, we see that right here in this Bible. Uh, but at the same time, if if you're his child, then it's going to be a measured chastisement. Uh, again, now, if somebody is not his child and they have been just been a blasphemous devil and they and they working against the Lord. Hey, um. It it he is the Lord, and whatever he is measuring out, it will be just and it will be righteous. And a lot of times I tell you though, that God don't have to do anything to you. All he has to do is move his hand of protection off of somebody, and death will come in. You know, it's just that. It's, exactly, that's what I meant, Lisa. Thank you. That's yes, that's a very good point. Yeah, you know, death is just is gonna sw swoop in and get somebody because these. These entities, they're actually being restrained by the power of the Holy Spirit. They wish they could just swoop in and eat everybody alive right now. But it's the Holy Spirit that restrains them. And I am I am convinced whether people think so or not, I, I don't really care, uh, that uh, they are actually walking among us. The fallen ones, they're walking among us. And we're seeing it more and more as things are being unveiled in these last days. So... Uh, it is the hedge of protection and the provision of the Lord and his supernatural restraint that keeps them from doing anything to anyone. And some people go and they play on the devil's playground and they do stuff they ain't got no business and they don't realize the danger in their end. And I'm telling you, if it wasn't for, uh, you know, a praying mother or father or sister or brother or aunt or uncle or grandmother 10 or 10 generations back, there was a believer praying for her future grandchildren and great, great, greats. That they're even even walking around right now. People just don't even know. It is the supernatural power of God that protects all men. Because these things that walk among us, if they could devour you, they would devour a person in a New York second. But it's the restraint of the Lord. We don't give him enough praise, honor, and glory for his daily supernatural protection of us all. 
But no, I do not believe that like uh, this, this whole concept of God is just out to like punish people. It's just, it's not right because Jesus took the penalty upon himself. Then this is why you'll hear me. If I do preach on sin, I'm preaching against people playing with the devil because that serpent is looking to kill. And it is only the restraint of the Holy Spirit that keeps those entities from trying to eat somebody alive. That's the perspective I'm coming at it with. And the other is that these, these things like sin or whatever, it is a weapon. And when I say sin, I'm talking about some type of um, thing that has ensnared a person. Let's say drugs. That thing is a weapon that might have been a generational curse that some witch put on somebody's family uh, or wished against them or a bend in the family. And it is actually trying to destroy that precious person. And instead, you'll have preachers preaching just against sin, 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 and not saying, this is the weapon that's been formed to destroy you. As a warning, get, get away from it, get out of it. The devil's trying to kill you with that, sweetheart. That's what's going on. And as, as the days carry on, that's, that's what you're going to be hearing me preaching about more and more because we have been misled by a lot of these, I'll give them a pass, albeit well-meaning preachers. They've been coming at it from the wrong perspective. If Jesus has taken upon himself, the Bible says God laid on him the iniquity of us all. And I keep saying that is a dark word. It's not just sin. Iniquity is like dark, dark, dark stuff. And it says he laid he laid on him the iniquity of us all. And Jesus said, paid in full to tell us that. Then he is not angry at the sinner anymore. And if he's not angry at the sinner anymore and all sin has been punished in Jesus, this is why the gospel is good news. It is a gift of pardon. So no, I don't think God is out to punish people and we should be afraid, quote, unquote, of his punishment. Again, I say in a, a New York second, he is not anybody to be played with. If the Lord tell you to stop, you need to stop because he got your number and he ain't going to miss. If he come for you, he will chastise. The Bible says that he will chastise you and he will scourge. I told you, look up scourge. That's a whipping. He will scourge every son. He ain't playing because he loves you and he's trying to preserve and protect your soul from the devil. The devil's trying to destroy you. So that's the perspective we ought to be coming from. If we're admonishing people, it's not the unbeliever. The unbeliever can't come out of sin. He's got to be washed in the blood of the lamb. The believer needs to move away from that stuff because the devil's trying to shorten your life, make you miserable, destroy your testimony, and just all of that stuff, keep you ineffectual in the faith. But for the unbeliever, good news, baby. Jesus loves you and he wants to save you. Will you receive it? It's a free gift. Will you believe on him? That's all we need to be preaching to the unbeliever. That whole, I'm sorry. He's got to be watched in the blood of the lamb. I'm getting feedback. I don't know where that's coming from. The devil's trying to shorten your life, make you miserable. Kevin, you need to mute your tab. You need to mute YouTube. We're hearing it. Thanks. I was sounding good, though. I was preaching good. So, (laughs) (laughs) praise the Lord. So, uh, you know, in in these last days, I think more and more things are going to come out. Um, you know, a lot of these people, they went to the cemetery, I'm sorry, not cemetery, seminary and learned things and they learned them incorrectly. And what they really did, and I think it was a trick of the devil by the satanic hierarchy that runs the systems of this world to keep men in darkness by putting blinders on people. So every time you read certain scriptures, you only see them a certain way. But in these last days, that mess is falling off of people's eyes. And we're beginning to see that the Lord is on a search and rescue mission for humanity. He is not on a search and destroy mission. And I'm looking for powerful powerful move of God in these last moments that we're here on earth before his bride is caught away. And that's all I got to say. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. You started preaching a little bit, but I wanted to ask you, did you, uh, did you mean to say cemetery is a joke or did you just misspeak? Yeah, I always, whenever I do that, I always mean to do that because they are, They remind me of just when Jesus was rebuking the Sadducees and the Pharisees, and he said that they were white and sepulchers full of 
dead men's bones. And that's what these uh, places have done. Now, I'm not saying that everybody there is wicked and every, no. I'm saying I think the hierarchy was set up to keep men in darkness because the systems, it even has the hiss of the serpent system. The systems of this world are controlled by the devil himself. And these institutions are connected to the system. They have to get their licensing and their accreditation and all this stuff from the system. So they got to play the game. And in, a, and in having to play the game, they have kept men in darkness deliberately on certain topics and certain things that are going to be revealed in the last moments that we're here on earth because it's about to shift. The reason y'all see all this hell breaking loose is there's a shift coming. There's a change. There's a shaking up. There's a waking up because his people who have been asleep and don't know who they are are waking up and it's coming out. It's the truth cannot be suppressed forever. And when we, the church is going to be taken out and the Lord is turning his attention back to the apple of his eye, which are the original people of God. And it's coming out. It's, it, it can't be shut up. It's already happening. It is the time of Jacob's trouble. And Jacob is being stirred up because those dry bones are going to live again, just like it says in Ezekiel 37. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. So uh, the cemetery uh, was intentional, I guess, or even if it wasn't, uh, it's uh, ap appropriate uh, the way you, you expressed it. A seminary is like a cemetery, I guess. Yeah, uh, it was intentional. All right. Very good. Uh, I see Brother Kevin's here now. Um, and I want Heather to answer the question next, but Br Brother Kevin, we, I'm glad you could uh, join us. Uh, you want to say hello to everybody bef before we move on to Heather? Let's see if your audio is working too. Okay. I see you're, you're oh. unmuted. Yeah. Hey guys, <laughs> I am not a technological genius. Um, I have no idea what the question was because I've spent all this time trying to figure out how to get in here and get my actual picture on here. I had a video thing. Good thing I had tape on it so you wouldn't have to see me. I don't even have a shirt on. I love all you guys. Thanks for bringing me in. Um, this is awesome. This is okay. awesome. Happy birthday, by the way, Luke. Uh, I don't look no 70 either. I ain't German, but there you go. Um, I want to bless everybody, and I wish all of you an absolutely wonderful day in the Lord. And I thank you all, and I love you all. Yeah, awesome. Amen. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, your audio sounds good, and that's an interesting uh, uh, picture you have we're looking at. Um, all right. Well, uh, Heather, I, will you answer the question next? But uh, Ben, could you read the question over so that uh, Kevin knows what it is? Yes. Uh, the question is true or false. Uh, and I think you might be familiar with the format where we have, you can answer certainly false, uh, leaning false, undecided, leaning true, or certainly true. Um, and the question is true or false. It, it is worse to suffer punishment from God than from men. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, Sister Heather. Well, first of all, I would love to say welcome to my brother, Kevin. Um, I'm so honored that you're able to join the same day that I'm joining. It means the world to me because now I'm a little bit less nervous. But um, I answered um, that it is certainly better to fall in the hands of God. I don't remember exactly where that falls on the scale, but, um, and that is for a believer. For a non-believer, I think that falling into the hands of God is a very scary thing. I know I was terrified it, of it for years. Um, I was raised in a false religion and a cult, the Jehovah's Witnesses. So I was raised to believe that God was this horribly scary being of some sort and I was terrified of ever facing him because I knew that there was nothing that I could possibly even lift my head up to look at him but since I got saved I have to tell you I trust God so much more than I trust man 
And I would gladly put myself in his hands, knowing that Jesus has paid the punishment for my sin and all God sees, all the father sees is the righteousness of Jesus Christ all over me. I would so much rather have that than to fall into the hands of man. That's pretty much all I have to say about that. All right. Thank you, sister. Uh, all right. Uh, Kevin, uh, do you understand the question now? Are you ready to give an answer? Did it work? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, I can see yes, we hear you fine. Um, I forget exactly how the question was worded, but I remember certainly false. And I guess I would have to agree with most people that have said so far, because I'm a believer. Um, the ultimate punishment from God would be, for a non-believer, obviously, would be damnation, right? But for me, if he's going to punish me, <laughs> I deserve it. Um, I've done something to upset the Lord, to grieve the Holy Spirit, whatever, and he's going to punish me. And when the Lord punishes his children, he does it because he loves me, right? So if he needs to whoop my butt a little bit to get me back in line so I can focus on him again, that's what he'll do. So to me, if God is going to punish me, that's a good thing, I think. And I forget exactly how the question was worded, but I remember I was certainly false because I think for God to punish me is good because I needed it or he wouldn't be punishing me. Right. Otherwise, he'd be busy blessing my life. So that would be my my answer. Oh, by the way, thank you, Heather, because, yeah, it makes me a lot less nervous. I was really nervous to try this tonight when I was asked. I was like, oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? But, yeah, this is kind of cool. Right on. And this is Bella. This is the princess of my life. She runs everything. She's my cat. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, good answer, brother. And, and uh, that certainly goes along with what uh, we read in Hebrews about uh, chastisement. Uh, brother Ben, uh, I guess you're the last one to answer the question. Okay. Um, well, a couple things. Uh, well, we know it from Matthew 10, where G when Jesus was sending out, sending out his disciples to uh, do the initial uh proclamation of the gospel uh well the, I, I believe the gospel of that felt it was the gospel of the kingdom where they were used going out to israel saying that the kingdom of, have he, of heaven is at hand which means it was eminent but uh because they rejected the king uh the kingdom was postponed uh but when he when he did that he said to them that uh he said and do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul but rather fear him who is able to destroy both the soul and body in hell and when I first read that verse as a as a new believer, that scared the living heck out of me. Um, but now I, I now I see it for what it is. What he's saying to them basically is that, hey, I'm sending you out, and yet it's not like you're going to be without danger. Um, some enemies of the truth are, are not going to stop until they until they kill the body. So there's enemies out there that's going to be that are going to resist the truth, and they're going they're going to want to kill you. But these uh, messengers or disciples. We're not to fear a man um, because the worst they could do to you is, is destroy your body. But, uh, you know, God has the ability and the authority to kill the unbeliever uh, or destroy the unbeliever with everlasting fire. So I believe what he's trying to basically tell them here is that uh, two things. One is, first, it's an incentive that to them to a preach, preach to the lost because of their eternal fate. And second, uh, it should give them boldness and not fear since God's power uh, is on the side of those who uh, share that message of truth. Um, and I, I, I hear a lot of preachers uh, say things like, um, oh, well, we should fear Satan. and uh, But Satan really has no power to destroy us in, in hell. He's no authority. In fact, he's going to receive the same fate as unbelievers and, and, and surely worse. Um, so in the final analysis, uh, it is the unbeliever himself who ultimately is responsible uh, to receive the truth. So it's not... Uh, you know, Satan has no power to destroy people in hell, but he can deceive people. Um, but still, ultimate responsibility is still on the unbeliever because uh, they have every uh, ability to, to believe. Satan just gives them an excuse to suppress uh, the truth and unrighteousness. And, uh, and and also, too, the Bible says that nowhere in the Bible it doesn't say we're to fear Satan. We're told to resist him. 
uh, and that he will flee from us. So we shouldn't be fear fearing him at all. And also with regards to this question, the punishment, um, I think it depends on, on your relationship with God. If you're an unbeliever, yes, you should fear punishment. It's worse than man's because even though man has uh, developed exquisite tortures for people, uh, they cannot be worse than what uh, the the unbeliever will face. Uh, I believe in hell, and um, and because of that, it, you know th that's what they should ultimately fear is God. Um, for for believers, uh, uh, again, it's kind of the same thing. We you know if if uh, if we die early and we are we we refuse or do not accept deliverance, as Hebrew says, um, then any. Uh, any punishment or uh, uh, destruction we, we receive by men, it's just going to result in a better resurrection for us, uh, as Hebrew says. And then also, too, is that, you know, again, punishment is really, punishment is kind of a, a vague word. Um, for an unbeliever, I see punishment as God's wrath. God's wrath abides on believer, unbelievers until they believe on Christ, and then it, the, the, the wrath of God is off of them, essentially. Um, it does, no longer abides on them. Uh, but when there are believers, um, uh, believers are chastised, which uh, chastisement basically means child child training, where uh, God will correct you. Sometimes it does hurt, um, but it's never to destroy us. It's only to uh, correct us for our for our own good. Uh, even even sometimes he can chastise us to unto death. But again, it's ultimately for our own good uh, for two reasons, I think. One is we can't it will keep us from. Uh, hurting other believers, and then also too, it, it would uh, if we were to persist in that, uh, and into the and in, in, in straying from the truth, um, then we could lose a lot of rewards that we that we might lose if if we were not taken out sooner. Um, and then also too is that uh, in First Corinthians eleven it says um, that uh, if we would judge ourselves, we ourselves would not be judged. So typically, I find in my experience. Uh, that and this lines up with scripture is that if you if we judge ourselves, God has no need to judge you because you you've already know that you you you've done uh you you've not you've disappointed him you've disappointed yourself and you've not uh lived and conducted yourself in the way a saint should and so when we judge ourselves, there's no reason for God to judge us. In fact, First uh, John I think says we, that uh, well I'll, I'll, I'll hold off on that. But anyways, it says what we but when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord that we may not be condemned with the wor world. And that word that word there where it says we may not, it's sometimes we translate it as we might not be condemned with the world. But the word uh, might not or may not be condemned with the world that may not is actually the word hina in in the Greek. And um, anytime that word ap appears in the Greek, even though it sounds like it, it's an uncertain outcome, like we might not be. A condemned of the world, we may not be condemned of the world. It sounds kind of iffy, like there's some kind of contingency, like it may or may not happen. But actually, um, the word hina uh, is is basically uh, expressing a a certainty. It's a certainty as 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 to outcome. Um, from the divine perspective, it's it's a, a syntactical syntactical construction in the Greek, and it always means um, it's a divine purpose and a certain outcome. So it, it sounds again in English, it sounds iffy, but in Wherever you see that word hina in the Greek, it's a uh, it's a definite thing. It's 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 a definite result. It, it it's a, we, even when we are punished by God or ch chased up, chastened by the Lord, we will not be. It's a promise from God. We will not be condemned of the world because we have a completely. We're we're sons. We're not uh, slaves to the law. So that's uh, an important distinction, I think. All right. Thank you, um, Ben. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, but in the chat, Mia Pratt submitted a true false statement. Uh, I post it here in our little, if you look under our messages here, if you, uh, you can find it and save it yep. in, in, in case you want to use it today or uh, next time. Okay. Uh, and okay. So everybody's had a turn to answer. Does anybody want to add, uh, say any more on, on this question? Um, yeah, I just want to say, I'm so glad Ben kind of the way he answered it really uh, kind of made more clear my point. That's kind of why I restated what, what the question was to answer it. Because for me, it was a little confusing because um, it's it, like as a believer, uh, you know, the, I won't face ultimate punishment from God. But however, in theory, um, I, I something feels wrong about saying I would fear men and or 
to me, if something were to happen to me, you know, that was really bad, right? Even at the hands of men, in some way, I would I would see it as chastening from God. So ultimately, that that's why it was difficult for me to answer the question. Um, because in my experience so far, when something really, really bad has happened to me, or something that I find like, you know, kind of hard to accept, I usually fi- find a way where I, where I could see that God was teaching me a lesson about something in in that process. So in, in my mind, you know, not every single time, but uh, a lot of times since I've been saved, it sort of seemed to work out that way. I have felt this divine um, hedge around me, this protection from God. Uh, and it's so many times. And when when something really bad does happen, something really doesn't go my way, um, most of the time it, it, it will happen as, it's somehow as a result of something that I've been overlooking or something I know God has been trying to deal with me about and I've been stubborn and resisting his uh his uh, you know advisement uh, on my behalf trying trying to trying to kind of he'll kind of like grieve me about something that I'm that I'm not dealing with and so that's why it, is, it was just kind of a circular question for me but uh, I do also I do of course agree that uh, for the believer we um we don't actually face uh like true punishment from God in fact uh I was looking um Hebrews here. Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous, nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. And uh uh that's been that's been my experience too. So I like what Kevin said uh about how even even the uh punishment or chastening from God isn't something necessarily to be feared. Although I do often tell God when I am fearing, even not so much just chastening, but uh, uh, negative things that could happen in my life, even though I know ultimately I'm guaranteed this uh, this uh, eternal happily ever after, is uh, that, you know, at least for now in this mortal coil, I still will have to deal with the things of the world. I'll have to deal with things going wrong. And so it's not so much that I'm not trusting God to make it all right in the end, but I'm just more uh, uh, stressing out about the meantime. Do you, you know what I mean? <laughs> like what I'm going to have to deal with in the meantime, uh, because at least while we're alive, it, it really feels like it feels like forever being alive and worrying about the future and things, even though I know one day it will be clear to us that it was just the blink of an eye that we were even here. But um, but anyway, I, I everybody had uh, great answers to the question. That's why I hesitated to go first. But I felt bad. <laughs> I felt bad uh, 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 leaving it to Luke. So. All right. Thank you. Uh, well, you said you used a term that I would like to respond to. You, this term hedge of protection. Uh, b- before I before I go into that, though, let me s- uh, mention that uh, I see Chris Annie made a comment, uh, she says, so falling into the wrath of men might well be chastisement of God. Um, yeah, that's so how I, uh, I guess everybody can think about that and maybe respond to Chris Annie's point. Uh, but let me let me uh, first reply to your, uh, when you use that term, hedge of protection, what comes to my mind. Uh, a few years ago, I was, when I was street preaching one day, um, um, it, it was not that unusual for someone to come up and want to lay hands on me and pray for me because uh, if you've seen my street preaching videos, you know that I was preaching in a wheelchair because uh, my my condition was so bad at that time that I, I couldn't stand up for more than 20 or 30 seconds. Um, so I, I'm in a wheelchair, and so every once in a while, someone would want to pray for me. Well, this particular day, uh, uh, people kept on wanting to pray for me one after another. And then and then uh, a whole group of people kept, maybe 10, 15 people all gathered around. were all laying hands on me, praying for me. And, and one in particular was saying, I mean, he put a hedge of protection around me. Uh, and, and of course, they did that. They want to protect me because they know that in, when you street preach that um, you're you're imposing your message on an audience that's not there to listen. I mean, it's not like you people come to hear me street preach. I'm going there and and preaching 
whether they like it or not. Uh, so there, therefore, some people don't like it and 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 respond. Uh, uh, they get angry and sometimes even uh, violent. Uh, so I was happy to get the prayers for protection, but um, but then I asked them. I said. I've had every once in a while someone want to pray for me, but today, look at all the people praying for me. I don't understand this. And 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 they said, well, we're all in town here for a convention, a, a prayer convention. <laughs> so they'd come in from all over the country and uh, to have a prayer meeting. So I was the beneficiary of that. And then when I left and got in my car to drive home, uh, within a couple of minutes, I'm on the freeway and I'm going 70 miles an hour. The, the, the freeway is moving fast, but it is quite crowded. And I thought, wait a second, it's, this is, uh, I better really pay attention. So I, I put my hands at 10 and 2, and I really focused. And within a few seconds after I did that, uh, the traffic up ahead of me had come to a sudden stop. And, and so I had to stop as quickly as I could without screeching my tires. And I was able to stop just before the car in front of me. Uh, so I'm, I'm thinking, I'm glad I paid attention. But then I have this thought, maybe the people behind me are not didn't pay attention. And so um, I pulled over uh, into the next lane. Some For some reason, uh, I moved to right one lane I was able to get over very quickly. And as soon as I got out of that lane, the car that was coming behind me, probably 70 miles an hour, they were not able to stop because they weren't paying attention the way I was. And they ran into the car that was in front of me. And if I had not um, moved out of the way, I'm certain at the speed of that collision and in a small convertible that I was driving, uh, uh, I would have been killed. There's no doubt that I would have been killed that day. And so these, this prayer that I got that day for this hedge of protection around me, uh, I, I just don't believe that's a coincidence. I think that's all uh, the power of prayer and God sparing me. And I, I, I think I'm here today to, to um, be here with you, conducting church uh, together so that uh, because God has a purpose for me and for all of us. So I was spared. And so that's what I think about when I hear someone say heads of protection. Um, oh, so, yeah. yeah, regarding this question, whoever wants to say more, uh, I'd like for you to respond to Chris Annie's point, too, if anybody can do that. Anyone? Well, I have um, to say I completely agree with you, Brother Luke. I think that God was with you that day um, and praise God for that. Um, I personally I have a saying, I say that there's no such thing as coincidence, there's God incidents, and God has brought me through so much in my life to prove that to me, that there's there's absolutely no way, I, I just simply don't believe that there's a possibility of coincidence, I believe that God is in control, even before we are saved, because he knows the beginning from the end, so he knows who will choose him, and I believe that he protects us even from absolutely. the beginning. Absolutely. Absolutely, Heather. That's uh, uh, that. Uh, um, I know that for a fact. Looking back at my life, that's 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 so true. Um, and it's not a it's not a Calvinist type of, of perspective. It's really he just knows the end from the beginning. And uh, exactly, exactly. Yeah. If I'm see, if I've got a sports event, I don't watch sports. But if I did, if I have a sports event recorded on my DVR, and I'm watching it. Me, me knowing or not knowing doesn't change the outcome. It's just the outcome. And that's how I feel it is with God. He knows the beginning from the end. That doesn't mean he's in there moving the players. I was going to say quarterback, but I don't even know what that is. Moving the players around on the field. You know what I mean? It's, it's still, our, we still have yeah. the free will to make our decisions, but he knows what we've already done because he's seen it all already. Mm -hmm. Yep. I absolutely believe that. And I, and I do agree, Chris and he, like, that's why I think that uh, that's why I found the question hard to answer because at least so far in my experience, I, I couldn't, I wouldn't be able to help, but see some, some grave punishment for men uh, as some, some sort of chastening from God, because I've also seen 
me be spared punishment uh, that I might otherwise have received <laughs> uh, due to uh, due to I, I I felt really like divine intervention things just going in such a way that was just inconceivably uh, uh, like a better outcome for me than it than it should have been. So uh, I, that's how I that's how I would have to look at it. I wouldn't really be able to separate the two things. So. Okay, thank you. Um, does anybody want to respond to uh, Chris Annie's point? Uh, Brother Kevin, uh, would you like to say any more about this question and, and Chris Annie's point? If you gave me a quick reminder on what she said, I've been in the chat, so. Mm -hmm. Well, she, okay, uh, let me see. I think I removed my highlight of it so i don't know if i she can said find ultimately it. punishment from men could be seen as chastening from god oh right yes yeah so and i would agree 100 percent. right what does god use to yep. share the gospel with others other than the book yeah our lips, right uh what does god use to send a message to a a, a lost soul another human right uh, do they have to be believers? No. God, God used many. Look at the Pharaoh, right? I don't know the story that well, but he said, your life is your life because I needed it to be that way, right? He does that sometimes. He uses bad men to get through to the good men and find the good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the, the Old Testament great. is full of, uh, of uh, those uh, examples like that. Um, Sorry, right. I tend to paraphrase quite a bit because I am I'm basically your handyman that um, was reborn with the spirit a couple of years ago. And I am horrible for remembering things word for word. I'm just horrible at it. And I'm a paraphraser from way back in the day. So mm -hmm. but I do I do get my um my basis from the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Uh, don't, you don't need to apologize. Uh, you know, uh, uh, paraphrasing is, uh, in my opinion, perfectly acceptable. And uh, I, I have to do it uh, quite often. So there are some verses that uh, I can quote exactly right. But uh, it's okay as long as your paraphrase is, is accurate. Um, all right, uh, Sister Lisa, any more on this? Well, just something that I was thinking about that. Hal Lindsey said a, a few years back, I never forgot. Whatever you think of Hal Lindsey, I love this phrase. He said, he said, we are washed in the blood of the lamb. We believed on Jesus. He said, we never get what we deserve. And, 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 and that's just something I never forgot. And it's so true. We never get what we deserve. Uh, the Lord is not out on a search and destroy mission. He's not out to get man for anything he's trying to rescue not destroy so i just like people to keep that in mind you know please learn the character and nature of god in the old covenant there's a whole lot of things going on there Amen. and it's a little more dis difficult to discern in the old covenant because the old covenant has a lot of concealment and you really have to come at it from a new covenant perspective to even properly understand many of the things that transpired in the old covenant. So uh, if you're a new believer in Christ, I would admonish you to please learn your Lord, learn your savior, learn his character and nature because he is the Lord and he changes not. Now that being said, God, I, I'll say it, I'll say it over and over again. He's not a toy. He's not to be played with. And if the Lord is dealing with you about something, then listen to him. When you hear his voice, it says in Hebrews, harden not your heart as they did in the provocation in the wilderness. So, you know, he's to be honored because he is the Lord, but he's your father. He's Abba father. He's daddy God. He's not out to get you. If you're his child, he loves you. If you're not his child, he wants you to be his child. So these are the perspectives that, that we should have and hold dear to us. The other is for the fringe element. The other is really not for the, the vast majority of humanity, but it's their decision to receive Christ. It's their decision to receive the gift of pardon. We can't make them do it. So that, that's, that's all I would really have to say. I think somebody uh, used the word mercy. 
So I'm, I wanted to uh, make a point that uh, mercy and grace, uh, I found that many people use these words interchangeably. Uh, and actually, I believe they are the opposite of each other. Uh, I would define it this way. Grace is when you you receive something uh, wonderful that you do not deserve. And mercy is the opposite. It is, is you do not receive something awful that you do deserve. Um, so God is merciful uh, that we're, we're saved, we're spared condemnation in the second death in the lake of fire. Uh, and uh, he's gracious in that he, he gives us eternal life. And uh, wow. um, we can't even imagine. The Bible says, no, my ear, uh, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has imagined the good things God has prepared for those who love him. So what we have uh, to look forward to is so wonderful beyond our imagination. And we don't deserve that. It's only because God's gracious. Uh, all right. Any more on this question from anyone? All right. Ben, I guess we'll... Oh, Ben, did you want to say any more? You haven't taken a, tech, a second turn on this? No, I'm good. Thanks. All, Everyone, right. you, all your answers were great. Yeah. Okay, then. Uh, give us another question then, will you? All right. I'm about to drop a bomb here. Are you ready? True or false, nuclear bombs are real. <laughs> okay, so uh, did any panelists uh, write the question? <laughs> um, this, this is mine, uh, this is mine, <laughs> but uh, I figured there'd be some strong opinions, so uh, let's get into it. Okay, so if it's your question, you have to go last. Uh, uh, well, I think uh, we should torture Ben and make him go first. I think that was a Brother Luke level dad joke right there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I certainly am all in favor of torturing Ben, um, but uh, rather than uh, make him go first, I'll go first because my answer is just simply uh, yes. I I don't see any reason to not believe uh, nuclear bombs actually exist. Uh, but uh, I mean, I've I've come to. I uh, changed my mind about quite a few things over the years that I thought were I, I took for granted, and now I, I see it completely differently. And uh, but I do not buy into every you know conspiracy theory, but I, I don't reject them all either. Um, so I'd say yes. Yes, okay, so they who, do exist. Yeah, they do exist. Okay, okay. Angel, you want to go next? Well, give me a second. I'm gonna. I'm trying to look up something so that I can uh, help back up my statement she, real quick. She's undecided right now. I'll we'll go see. next. Oh, okay. I'm decided. I'm decided. I just oh. want to be able to come with facts. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah let, well, you go. You get it. <laughs> there's a gentleman named Galen Windsor that ha did a video I saw years ago, and it was dated when I saw it. It was probably, it looked like it was a good 25, 30 years old when I saw it. Meaning the you know the video and looked like it was VHS that had been you know recopied and uploaded. Now I don't know because they do all kind of Jedi mind tricks on us, but some of the arguments he made were very salient. And he claimed that he worked for the nuclear uh, energy division. He was an engineer, and that that the whole thing was just a uh, like psyop Jedi mind trick to make everybody sign on to the whole concept of one because they are the demons feed on fear okay he didn't call them demons but this is what they're doing um this is propagate everybody make everybody afraid then you go along with their program because oh we don't want nuclear war kind of thing but there have been videos that have demonstrated that if you have enough dynamite enough tnt you can create a mushroom cloud <laughs> so yeah. uh the whole mushroom cloud thing. And then the video, like when they were filming it, when you like when you go back and you watch the space videos and you see you start to see the junk that's in there when you when your eyes are open and you see how they're lying about stuff and this doesn't make sense. And you start thinking outside the box, you see it. Well, with the videos with the nuclear, uh so-called nuclear explosion, where they they were like models, you can see it's like, you know, it's like when you would see the old movies and you realize that's not a real house, that's a model and th that kind of thing. And then also that it's like, 
okay, it blew up everything, but then the camera's still filming. You know, it just it, there's certain things that just didn't make sense. Um, when people would go back showing some of the old footage from so-called nuclear tests and stuff. So I started questioning it. And when he was explaining that it was basically just a way to siphon off money from the public to so-called dispose of stuff that isn't even radioactive. Um, the whole thing about radiation, uh, I've, I've come to believe radiation is is heat. Now, heat can be dangerous. He can cook you behind. But um, that's what it is. It's heat. So like cell phones, for example, when everybody goes, oh, radiation, the radiation. Well, yeah, if you put the thing next to your breast in your bra, ladies, not advisable. It's heat. Uh, men, you shouldn't put it in your pocket. It's cooking your gonads. That just doesn't make sense. So it, um, that's what's really going on. And that's why they tell you to be two or three feet away from it, because it has a heat radius that's emanating from it. That's why if you're holding it in your hand too long, it starts warming up. And if you think about what a radiator is, all you got to do is think about your car. <laughs> it dissipates heat. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it, 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 they, they, they play a lot of games with words and stuff. And that's why we have to, like, do our own research and think and, and, and then go by our own experimentation. You know, um, it's like they I saw a video and this is when I really started to believe some of the things that, that Galen Windsor said, because I took it with a big fat cube of salt. I wasn't sure he was telling the truth or not, but but I didn't just completely dismiss it because I had come to learn that space wasn't what we've been told and all that. So when I when I uh, saw out here in Los Angeles, they have uh, eyewitness news and there was a guy whose name is Ono. I can't remember his first name. He's an Amerasian gentleman. And I only say that to identify him. So if you guys do find the video, see what I'm talking about. He did a segment on Eyewitness News where they went to this particular island where they said a nuclear accident had happened. And I'm literally sitting watching this laughing because people didn't even know what they were looking at. Now, they claim if there's a nuclear spill that wherever that place is, like Chernobyl, somebody just mentioned in the chat, it's supposed to be uninhabitable for a a thousand years. You know, on this island where they had this nuclear accident, it was recorded. Everybody, they did a big news story about it like 20 years before. They go to this place and there's little bunny rabbits <laughs> running around. This will, this will just thrill Sister Angel. They had bunny rabbits that were multiplying so much because there were no predators on this little island. So people would get off the boats. They were actually doing, uh, what do they call those, uh, tours of this island. Where people were getting off the boats, and the, I, I never seen that before in my life. The bunny rabbits were not afraid of people because there were no predators. So they would come running up to the boats because they knew the people were going to feed them. And they would be looking at them like, give me something to eat. They weren't even scared. And so the, he gets off the boat, and he's talking about how they had this accident. And it was an amazing thing because here was all this uh, the, the uh, rabbits, and there's all this green, lush uh, vegetation everywhere. And I'm going, that don't look like no nuclear accident to me. And if and if it didn't kill the bunny rabbits, so I, I just started seeing that this stuff was they were literally mocking the public. They were like, oh, it's just astonishing that this could have recovered so fast. No, it's because it's not what we've been told. But you know, there are people you're gonna believe it. You don't want to believe your government will lie to you. You don't want to believe they would manipulate you to keep you in fear and to make everybody afraid. I have come to believe that all the governments of the world are actually conspiring together, just like Psalm 2 says. But people aren't going to believe it. What are you going to do? How is it that they can all come together for an Antarctica treaty and all agree we can't go to our Antarctica, but they can't agree on anything else? Seriously, really? Yeah, there's too much going on. There's too much going on. They are in conspiracy together. They're all in bed together and they all working against us to Jedi mind trick us because they're all under the devil. But people don't want to believe that. So, OK, don't believe it. I know the Bible is true, and the Bible says they're all confederate against the Lord. So, okay, don't believe it. So my answer is, lean and true that they're fake. Hmm. Yeah. Hey, awesome. I, I'm very, really, I really appreciate your information. I'm, definitely, I'm not going to put my cell phone in my front pocket again after that. Well, okay. um, I sent a link to Ben to show. Um, I'm uh, trying to sure get it. Oh, you yeah. got it. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll answer real quick. Okay. 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 So does somebody else want to go first and then um, then I can go after he's, uh, he's got, got it going. Got it. Because I want to, I have a, I have a link I want to show while I answer. So, 
like a picture for you guys to see. Yeah. Okay. How about uh, Heather? Why don't you go next? You know, until recently, like when I say recently, I mean the last two years, I bought pretty much everything that I learned in school. And honestly, I've not given any real thought to whether nuclear bombs are real or not. I My opinion until Sister Lisa spoke was, um, why would you possibly lie about something so horrible? But... That's food for thought, Sister Lisa. Okay. Well, I think uh, there's a saying I like to repeat. Uh, skepticism is the antiseptic for your mind. Uh, I do think it's a healthy attitude to be skeptical. Just don't just buy into everything you're, you're, you're taught. Uh, all right, Brother Kevin, uh, give us the answer, please. Are nuclear bombs real? All right, so you picked the one topic in the whole world probably that I've never actually considered. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> right? Because you grow up, I'm I'm 50, so I saw all the tests where they, you know, blew up bombs and they let the nice little soldier guys sit there and fry themselves for an experiment and stuff, you know. But was that a nuclear bomb? I don't know. Right? Because a nuclear bomb isn't the atom bomb. That's not the same thing that they're talking about. They're talking about like 10 times worse than the atom and all this other. Well, I guess what I would have to do since I'm in this position, you said, what is the answer? Well, here's the answer. I'd have to say, um, since I'm the one that always disagrees with Lisa, I'd have to agree with Lisa on a whole bunch of this, this time. Um, maybe not that there is no radiation because i've seen some really weird things growing in those places and it's a it's something that's read readable whether that means that there's a nuclear bomb or not there still can be nuclear technology in these plants to use for power but that might not mean that that little thing on the end of that great big old fake rocket that china parades around for the last 30 years same rocket it might not be a big nuclear head or whatever right um, I do know that they use that for fear. Um, like I said, I'm 50, and my whole life, I live in Canada, and we knew that the Russians are coming. The Russians are coming. The Russians are coming. Hide under your desk, bomb alert, Russians are coming. They're not coming. <laughs> they just don't care. They're busy in Russia. Um, does our government ever lie to us? No, guys, come on, believe everything, please. You know. Um, so is a nuclear missile real? I don't know where this question came from. I would probably have to almost lean towards no. Now, here's my reasoning. I know how the world works and I know how men work. And one of those men would have sold one of those small nuclear bombs to a very bad man by now. And we would have lost New York, Chicago, maybe Bangladesh um some part in syria somebody would have blown somebody up with one by now guaranteed and this would have started a trigger reaction i don't think as stupid as humans are i really don't think we're stupid enough to actually have done that and not have killed each other off yet so i would have to lean towards no they're probably not real and wow i've never thought of this question before that would be my answer, though. I think I'd probably have to now say that I don't really believe that they would be real because I'm pretty sure by now we would have we would have shot each other, right? Somebody would have, I think. Yeah, that's a very interesting uh, okay. uh, point of view, the, the, the justification for your answer. Uh, uh, it's a valid point. Uh, and regarding uh, who would ask such a question, that is Brother Ben. And, and I uh, think I know where he got it from. I would, we, I, would I, say, I, <laughs> I, I would say because Ben submitted such a question, we need to go back to the first question and discuss further chastisement. <laughs> um, 
It's my fault, guys. I, I we were talking after the show last night. I just kind of blurted that out. Nukes aren't real. <laughs> I don't oh, know if Ben no. and ever. <laughs> and this, is, this is what happens when Ben and Lisa get in the private conversation. This is what. No, no, in. this is a yeah. No, this is Angel. I I dropped that that so one on. Angel, uh, I know you're Angel. I can see your face. Why did I call oh. you? Lisa? <laughs> oh, I'm flattered. I'm flattered. But um, um no, I uh so no, I don't think they're real. And Kevin gave a really good what Kevin said uh is actually what made me start thinking about it. Um and this was like several years ago now, before like I guess it's now a pretty common thing that like is discussed in conspiracy circles. Um, but at the at the time, oh, and I guess Ben has the image up of different uh uh, mushroom clouds that are produced by <laughs> non-nuclear bombs, um, different uh, chemical-based explosions. Um, and um, so I, I was really obsessed with nuclear bombs as a kid, and I had, like, the atomic bomb movie, which is, like, um, all the footage of all the different tests they've done, right? And I remember, even as a kid, uh, watching this uh, footage and um, some of it just didn't like, I thought it was just magical. Like I thought, wow. So, Cause like, if you look at some of the older footage from like the real early tests, it looks very much like really old fashioned special effects that look totally dated now. But in my mind, because I didn't think it was an option that it could be fake. I thought it's almost like there's some sort of alchemical, like magical reaction that's happening that makes things look fake. <laughs> when these when these bombs are tested, it's like that's what I thought. That's what I thought. And so when um when I when I began to question everything, uh, uh I got this feeling as soon as nukes or you know atom bombs, any any of this stuff they they talk about these mega bombs that leave this tra this horrible damage, which really it's not the explosion we fear so much as the as what they tell us happens afterward, the nuclear fallout. This is a way of making a bomb. 10 times more frightening than it otherwise would be because yeah, it could take out a city, but really only the people that are living in the city would be afraid. And even then really just the people in the epicenter who, who wouldn't have any chance of surviving the blast. Right. Um, but it was the fallout that really scared everybody, you know, nuclear winter, that's like terrifying to people. And, um, um, somehow, uh, I just got this feeling in my stomach. It wasn't real. But it was very hard to find information about it because it wasn't uh, super popular in like conspiracy discussion. Although it was back before YouTube started censoring everything so bad that you can't find anything with their search uh, function. Um, so I did find uh, a couple things like, um, what was his name, Lisa? You mentioned him. That's what I was actually trying to look up with that guy's name. I think she said, called him oh, Galen. I, I found it. Galen Windsor. G-A-L-E-N. Galen Windsor, that's what I said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. He's great because he eats nuclear, like, uh, like he would eat plutonium and stuff, and uh, uh, and uranium samples um, uh, during his seminars to prove to people mm -hmm. that it didn't kill him. He would actually eat it, and uh, uh, and and at one point, I guess one of the uh, people from like the Environmental Protection Agency or something, they were. They were following him around, like trying to get him to submit to tests and stuff. But I mean, he didn't. Uh, I mean, I got, I don't know if he's alive still, but like he did this for a long time. And if it was as deadly as anybody would think, I mean, um, he would have not survived <laughs> uh, these things. If we can't even handle dosing of like of, of being in an area where such a thing like an explosion's just taken place uh, without getting radiation sickness, but he's eating it and not getting radiation sickness. You know, that's, uh, that's telling, right? So he, he said he used to swim in the, in the cooling pools that they would use for the nuclear reactors. And this was, I guess, um, something that was sort of common to do for the people that would work at this uh, nuclear facility until this whole radiation thing really started amping up where they were scaremongering about radiation. But if you see the purpose of it, one is people actually used to and now listen, I'm not saying I know for sure exactly all the ins and outs of radiation. I, 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 on one hand, I think it makes sense that it's just heat. Um, and so uh, it, it doesn't, you know, cause I, I, I used to wonder about that too. Like it's, it's radiation, that's what, that's what heat is. Right. But um, I'm not saying that I understand all of it because, you know, there's been some stuff about um, electromagnetic radiation 
with cell phones and whatever. And, and, you know, on the one hand, yeah, it could be that it's, it's the heat that you're exposing your body to, but on the other hand, you know, uh, it, it's like, I, I grew up in a very hot place in Key West and, and, you know, some of the stuff that, you know, I, I don't think, I don't think that, uh, that kind of heat, it might be the same as the kind of heat that's being produced from these electronics. I don't, so I'm not saying I understand all of that, but what I'm saying is with this nuclear fallout stuff, uh, that's fake. Now they can make really big bombs. I'm sure they can make really big bombs. I've seen, you know, what was it called? Um, like the, the, uh, the, the, the bunker busting bombs that they used over the Middle East. You know, I mean, these are, these are crazy, uh, huge explosions. Um, and so I know that they can make large bombs, but the fallout part of it and all this really crazy science fiction type stuff they say happens as a result, we've never seen any evidence of. Um, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, uh, they're still in, they're inhabited now. <laughs> um, we know about Chernobyl and yeah, things are, have absolutely flourished there. Um, in fact, just, you know, it kind of does lend credence to the fact that people did used to, to believe uh, they could treat different uh, ailments with things like radon or not radon, ra radi ra radium. The, it's like it was the, uh, when they used to think x-rays were like a treatment and stuff like that. And, and then all of that got uh, swept away with, um, with the Rockefeller medicine takeover where they, where, they, where, where they basically institutionalized what they called allopathic medicine and, um, and, and relegated everything else, all natural uh, cures that had been used for, um, you know, since time immemorial, uh, took what they call quackery. And this has been the, you know, and this has brought us, you know, wonderful things like uh, cancer treatment, which it end up, you know, in a lot of cases, you know, you're considered cured if you uh, don't die from the same, from the same exact cancer within like two years of treatment or something like that. Like, like uh, the, a lot of times the, the treatments uh, from allopathic medicine end up causing more harm than they do uh uh good but um but really uh one thing i just i i i see no evidence of at all is the, the idea of nuclear fallout and um kevin brought up a great point we uh it's a, it's hard to imagine that it, it, it's kind of one of those things we really start thinking about it, it's kind of fishy that well we had these explosions in in japan and then ever since then we've been able to clamp down on this totally except for the you know really the the meltdown at chernobyl and um, nothing, and nothing's gotten out of hand, you know. No, 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 no nukes have got. Even though they tell us all the time about missing nukes and and the the fall of the Soviet Union and all the nukes that went missing and the scientists that were selling things off because they were totally broke and they, they, there was no security. And it, it's 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 beggars' belief that that nothing else has happened ever since then. It just kind of reminds me. Uh, it's it's got the the same uh, stench of falsehood that NASA does. You know what I mean? Things just don't add up. And um, the fear mongering around it really serves to, to so many ends. You know, I mean, it really controls people. Uh, this idea of fearing, again, not the bomb. We know about bombs. Um, we understand that, you know, bombs are scary, but the, it's not the, the bomb we fear. It's the fallout. Uh, it's the fallout that they say could somehow affect people for you know, hundreds and thousands of miles, you know, what, like what happened with the uh, tsunami in Japan, um, Fukushima, you know, I, you know, I've heard so many people <laughs> like the conspiracy theory surrounding that is that the whole world's dying now. It's dead. Like we just don't know it yet. You know, I heard so many people on podcasts talking about that because of the Fukushima, uh, 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 radiation that's leaking into the oceans. I mean, people talking about how we're dead men walking and that, uh, we just don't realize that 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 life can no longer con continue on Earth because of what happened at Fukushima. So this, to me, just just kind of sets off my alarms for BS. And then uh, there is a lot of great evidence uh, that there's something up with this whole scam. But I'm not saying big bombs don't exist. I mean, you know, the bomb itself, um, you know, that I'm sure that, that that they can do that. They can get together enough explosive to probably make an explosion as big as they want it to be just limited by how much explosive material they can, they, you know, uh, put together. But, um, but yeah, uh, definitely. Ed, I, I think that, uh, this fallout stuff and nuclear winter, um, I don't think we have, have anything to fear, uh, when it comes to that. Um, and that's why a lot of, I think a lot of, uh, eschatology is affected by this nuclear hoax.
thing because so much of that always factors in where they, you know, they interpret everything through the lens of nuclear winter being real and all that. And that that's always annoying. But uh, but yeah, I'll leave it there. I'd like to see what Ben has to say because uh, I <laughs> I don't know what he has to what he what he thinks about it. But uh, but I think it's funny that he that he asked it after what I said last night. So. Mm-hmm. That's what happens when the two of you talk. Uh, yeah. You know, <laughs> telling what's going to come out of that. Uh, did uh, Heather? Did you answer this one yet? Mm-hmm. Yes, I did. did. I really didn't have a lot to contribute. Um, there's a lot going on in my mind right now. Um, I was very into the conspiracy theory thing for a long time. So this is definitely enlightening. I, I really don't have much to add, though, because I don't really have a lot of knowledge on this subject. Okay, that's all right. Um, uh, so everybody's had a turn, I guess, to answer except Ben, right? So go ahead, Ben. Yeah. Can I just add? Yeah, Heather, sure. Heather, you just bombed out. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great joke. <laughs> He bombed out. You get it? Kevin. Do I have to explain it to you? Kevin, you're fired. <laughs> Kevin, thank you. Thank you very much. See, I'm not the only one that makes these attempts at humor. Uh, I was thinking, Luke, you're not the only one with bad humor. I'm worse <laughs> than you, bro. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, Brother Ben. Uh, well, I, I'm probably going to disappoint, actually, because I, I, you guys uh, pretty much covered all the things I was going to say. Um, but I, I also am highly suspicious of them as well. It has all the, um, it has all this, this, it smacks of the same like NASA hoax that the fake footage, the things that don't make sense at all. Um, again, the the footage it looks completely movie like, and we're, we're you know. We're, the cameras weren't destroyed or people wore these special glasses. Mm-hmm. And I remember my, my mother uh, talking about, um, I call her mom. I don't know. I called her mother. I never called her mother, <laughs> but uh, she, she used to uh, tell me and my dad too, that they used to, you know, have to do drills at school, get under your desk. Like that's going to do a damn thing. Um, and so it's it just, a, it just seems like it's a completely a control mechanism. Um, and also too, is that most recent uh, bomb explosion in Beirut, Lebanon, which was supposedly ammonium nitrate. I don't know what it was, but uh, it, no one ever is, claim, is claiming it's, it's a nuclear, yet it definitely had a huge uh, impact. Um, and it looked exactly like a nuclear bomb or, or, or the same kind of, had the same uh, shape and form and everything about it uh, looked exactly what they uh, push as what a nuclear bomb would look like. Um, it had the you know huge mushroom cloud, everything. Um, it, it probably a small scale on a smaller scale, but again, with the with the uh, with the ability to manipulate images with uh, different uh, techniques, you can make something look bigger or real when it's not. Um, and so, yeah, I, I have very strong suspicions. I don't, I don't really, uh, I don't have any fear for it, uh, of them at all. And like, like you said, you always hear them all the time. Oh, a nuke, you know, a suitcase nuke. Well, if those things existed, surely they would be detonated by now if, if nothing else by accident or some other process um I, so I just think it's i think it's bunk um and i don't have any fear of it at all and i, don't, I also wonder too like something like that i i, I kind of wonder god sets limits on things i don't think god would allow something like that yep. would, to to happen you know um yes yes yeah. yes yes <laughs> See, with all these diseases and pandemics and things like that it's highly suspicious all of them because i just don't think god uh, allows that kind of thing to happen indiscriminately, uh, you know, run rampant and, uh, to, you know, something so devastating in the, in the hands of man. I don't th- see God allowing that. That's just my opinion, though. That I feel the same way, Ben. I do, too. It's just a feeling that I get in the pit of my stomach that, uh, that it's all designed to make, because they kind of have to, uh, if they're trying to tell us there is no God or that, or at the very, very we have no reason to think that there is that you know oh believe it if you want to but but really all we can prove is here and today and and man and mm-hmm. you know uh the physical reality um they have to tell us about they have to give us a a, a, a puffed up view of ourselves and our ability to, to have mm-hmm. control over the very life and death of everything on this planet yes um 
you know? And that's what I see it as. I see it as yep. just, uh, then because it would make sense if there is no God or God can't be, we can't be sure of a creator and we're in the space on this random ball floating randomly throughout this mm -hmm. black void of randomness. Um, it, of course, why wouldn't we be able to, to cook up all these doomsday devices and, and pathogens and, and wipe ourselves out, you know, and that's the same purpose mm -hmm. asteroids, you know, asteroids are, are, are really like the sum of all atheist fears. Uh, if mm -hmm. you think about it, because it's just yes. like, like this random space rock, just not having any regard for the the, the <laughs> life that we have on this planet and all that we've done. And and no one's out there watching out for us and no one cares. And and it just comes and it just smacks into us just randomly like a like like a like a you know like a piece of shrapnel off of a you know off of like in the road while you're driving. Oh, just happen to take out a planet full of billions of people and even and yet, more billions of life forms. And yet, Sister Angel. There's not one word of mention in the Bible where God is concerned about any of those things that they exactly, claim. exactly. That would be everything. There, there, <laughs> there is a verse in the Bible. There isn't there a verse in the Bible where it talks about men's tongues, um, t tongues of basically uh, melting in their mouths or something like that. Or I, I can't remember. Yeah, there, there, there is There's something. Some, yes. I think it's in in I think it's in Revelation. I'm not a hundred. Um, but what I'm saying is God ain't scared. God ain't going, oh, what am I going to do about this? I right. got to act to stop that. No. And he never tells us. I told you there's 365 verses in the Bible that say fear not. That's one for every day of the year. So when we wake up, we're supposed to be thankful. Thank you, Lord. You're going to keep us. You're going to protect us. You're going to. Why would I worry about any of this mess they're doing? And I told you all, I did a video called the word of God is prophetic. And I said, because I saw when all this stuff started, all this stuff that's going on right now, when it first started back in April, right in there, March and April, I was never afraid, not once, because the Lord ain't never told me to be afraid. And my trust is in him. With, you also with their nukes, they, I remember, um, I don't remember the exact percentage, but supposedly, again, this is a, a, a fear tactic, I believe, is that there's supposedly a big debate between the scientists like, well, this could be a chain reaction. There's a 30% chance this could destroy all life on planet Earth. If, <laughs> it's and, like uh, the many black holes. Yeah, and the, but they're really good. They're really going to risk it. You know, oh, well, it didn't happen. So, uh, you know, luckily we didn't destroy all of mankind, but we could, we, but we, there still is the fear or risk of, you know, thermonuclear war um, worldwide, and uh, yeah, I think it, I think it's all bunk. The mini black hole. I <laughs> I haven't heard that one since the angel. Oh, there's oh, so yeah. many you things like heard? that. Vain imagination. I thought the mini black hole was like the U.S. budget or something for Congress or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, apparently CERN is ripping mini black holes into the universe and going into other dimensions. They, now, this is the they're only just going to keep that, on doing it, apparently. They, just don't have, they don't even care that they could possibly you know, beat up the, the whole super world. The hedron collider and they're crashing stuff and they're going to make an explosion. You know, this is the thing that, that I was thinking. Y'all seen that picture of CERN, right? And it's this big, like, circle with all these wires and lights and everything. And it reminded me when I was a child and I used to be like, when I would see Star Trek come on and I would see the, the deck of the Starship Enterprise and you'd see all those lights and stuff. And I used to wonder, what is that button doing? What? Because I was a child, right? Now that I'm adult and I know that's just a set, I go, it's just a set. How do I know that picture is real? How do I know that there is a CERN that they're really doing this with? Because I don't understand why they got to use that to open up a portal to the dark side when you can do it with a Ouija board. I don't understand. Somebody exactly. explain it to me. Uh, I used to reason that it was just because, <laughs> you know, there's limitations, I guess, on, 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 you know, what ritual magic can accomplish, you know. Uh, and so I thought perhaps for a more, free physical manifestation uh maybe they needed t to to go the extra mile and and that i you know and i also saw it as like a an occult mega ritual when they did it right but they, they've probably anytime they they just never stop talking about something like this in conspiracy mm -hmm. circles and it's everywhere you look and, and why would they like, let us oh, know about it sister. we don't want you to know about it we don't want tee hee tee hee right. ban you and it's like <laughs> uh, 
it's just I can tell that they're feeding it to us, like with like spoon feeding it to us. Yes. Because they want us and, that, and it whips everybody up into fear. And even if it is real, even if it is real. Show me the scripture in this Bible that says I'm supposed to be afraid of what devices they come up with when my God is God. Do you think that they got stuff greater than what they had in Egypt? Egypt was much closer to the fall of man. They were the ones, all of this technology and stuff, y'all, see this one, they don't tell you, all of this stuff, all of those religions all lead back to Babylon. All of this stuff goes all the way back. It's nothing new under the sun. And this is fallen angel technology, okay? And yet exactly. I don't see in the scripture where the Lord is disturbed by any of it. He said, he, he said in Psalm 2, please read it. He who sits in the heavens shall laugh, for he shall have them in derision. So if, if that's the God yep. that I serve, and it is, and he's not afraid, and I'm on his side, why would I be afraid? Right. Well, and, and I know people that have looked at the verses and they talk about Abaddon and the key to the bottomless pit. And listen, I know that's actually compelling because of at least what they've told us. They told us about the location of CERN and uh, and its connection to the to, to Abaddon and like some cult that, you know, worshipped. I, I, it's been a while now, but basically like it was like some some cult that I think worshipped like Abaddon or, or Apollyon. And uh, Apollyon, yeah, Apollyon. And so that is compelling, but I, let's be honest, how many of us have actually independently verified any of that information? I didn't. When I believed in it, I just went with it. And I was like, well, all these people are, you know, all these uh, conspiracy places are saying it. It's probably true. But I, and I didn't actually go and <laughs> figure out for myself whether or not that location really was um the, the location of this temple to Apollyon or any of that stuff. So I'm not saying that they're, you know, maybe that is what the Bible's talking about. It doesn't, so we shouldn't worry about it either way because we know it's inevitable and those things must come. But just be careful when they spoon feed you these uh, things that, uh, that, you know, everybody in Alex Jones is talking about. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's because CERN got so big for a while and a most, a great deal of it is based around the idea of an, unbiblical cosmology in my opinion so that's it that's another thing uh a, a great deal of the people that that push the cern stuff don't do it from uh let's say like an enclosed uh earth uh, uh perspective which you know i'm not i know not everybody listening believes in that but that's like i'm just telling you why i began to dismiss it too was that it was from that that cosmological perspective of of space and all that stuff and like saturn the planet being like uh, the which you know could have some truth in it that, that like Saturn is a a planet where the like like evil lives or something you know it could just be an evil uh, wandering star like we're told in scripture you know what I mean so there could be some truth there but they present mm -hmm. it as like it's actual like a planet that uh, evil creatures are walking around on or something so a lot of the people that pushed all that certain stuff push you know space as right. from a NASA perspective and they uphold NASA and uh, I'd rather uphold scripture so. Let's uh, well, let's see if uh, uh, Heather or um, um, Kevin want to say any more about this. But go ahead, uh, Lisa. I'm I just gonna say real quick, Revelation chapter nine verses one through eleven. If you go read it, where it talks about Apollyon and all that, there has to be a key that is given to them to open up the bottomless pit. The Lord is the one in charge of right. this stuff, y'all. Exactly. See, that's what I'm saying. So why am I gonna be afraid? My God is God. I'm on His side. I'm not falling under his judgment, his punishment. This is for the wicked. This is for the unrepentant. These are for the ones who have denied his son. These are for people who will not receive the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. These are people who are unrepentant in their rebellion against the Lord. That's not us. So that's what I'm saying. Why? Why? I don't know how they stir Christians up to be afraid. Your trust is supposed to be in the Lord. Do you know your God? If not, then get in this book. Turn off the TV. Stop watching them horror movies. Stop watching this crap that's feeding your mind that they're more powerful than the Lord Jesus Christ. And understand the devils tremble at his name. They are afraid of the Lord. He is the one that made hell for the devil and his angels. Not the other way around. Stop it. Our God is God. We ain't got nothing to fear. They the ones that need to be afraid. Yeah. Amen. 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 I'll tell you, none of that scares me. Uh, after brain surgery and heart surgery, uh, you know, that's uh, 
that's what's scary. Uh, this other stuff doesn't scare me at all. <laughs> uh, Heather and uh, Kevin, now that you've heard more uh, on this subject, do you want to say any more before we go to the next question? Uh, I don't know which topic are you talking about. The bomb or CERN? Either. Well, the bomb I already answered, but um, I don't know what's the question about CERN. Nothing. I just want to see if you had any more to say about the discussion, what we've been talking about. Oh, lots. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, more, it's bomb, your turn. Way more than the bomb. Um, because I could go probably have a chat one on one just with Lisa on this topic alone, simply because I believe that a whole lot of that technology is actually real. I'm not sure exactly what they're doing or what the idea behind what they're trying to figure out. I know what they tell us. But with that being said, I have to agree almost 100% on most of everything else she said, because I fear not. I just fear not. There's a little mark in the center of my forehead that the Holy Spirit put there, and it's the mark, the seal of God, Almighty God, who created everything. So I'm not scared when they open the Apollyon thing and the de the beasts come out. If there's demon armies coming out, I'm just not worried about it. If I'm here, I'm not worried about it. They're going to see my mark. I'm good to go. Um, with the CERN thing, I do believe they're doing something this is that technology is like she said this is i have no fear of the world because we're not of the world we're of jesus christ he's in us we're in him but this is the world we live in and it's the fallen world and the technology is real um how deep is the reality of the technology we're not sure but we know they have some kind of technology going on there and they're they're guaranteed to be nefarious they have put out more than enough um, films and little videos and stuff to tell us that they worship Satan and that that's what they're trying to do is open the pit. That's they're, they're, They don't try to hide it. They openly say we're trying to open the pit and that we worship Satan, basically, like they have rituals and everything else. And the reason I believe they tell us all that is because I think they have to. I really don't believe that like some people get scared of the mark of the beast i noticed in here already in the conversation somebody had mentioned about something and i'm, I'm worried about that because that might be the mark of the beast nah. <laughs> no a dude is going to sit there he's going to say i am god and you will worship me and take my mark or you're going to be punished maybe die or not be able to eat whatever but it's not going to be a sneaky thing we're going to know and i do not believe that like these CERN guys, I think what they're doing is nefarious and evil and has much to do with the end times that we're living in, biblically speaking, whether that's how they open that key. Like, is that the key? Is the key a technology? Is the key a code? Right? Look at the time we live in. A key could literally be a set of numbers of ones and zeros. They have all that quantum technology and all of that stuff where they literally they, they tell us with their schematics that their quantum technology computers are hooked up directly to the other realm so that they can ask any question of their computer and it gives them an instant answer, any question. Like that's the technology they have. And the reason I believe that they allow us to know this is because they don't have an option. Satan has to tell out here that that like we have to be able to have that choice we can't have it so that the lie is is all that we have for the option we have to have the truth right that's now this is just my opinion because the same as why do we have evil in the world everybody like why would god do that to us well how can you choose god if you don't have another choice right and i know myself as a father I certainly wouldn't want to just force my son to love me. I would want him to love me because he loves me because of who I am and what I've done for him in his life. And, you know, not just because you have to, because I created you to love me. That would be like a robot, right? 
And so I believe that this CERN thing, I mean, there's too much technology. There's, there's too many of them around the world to just be completely fake. I mean, what's the point in making a great big set like that? I definitely think they're trying to do something. Um, whether or not it's ever going to come to any kind of fruition. Um, if it does come to fruition, it's because my Lord, my God, my King, he said it's time for them to get their little ticket, their little key to make whatever happened in the world to make his prophecies come true. And that's where I stand with you, Sister Lisa, because mm -hmm. that is our Lord, our God. And if you can't trust the almighty God, creator of absolutely everything to, one, protect you from evil and stuff, uh, all of these things. If you can't trust in the Lord God to protect us and be stronger and more powerful than anything Satan can do, then you're on the wrong team. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. like you said, 365 times. I didn't know. I always said it's over 200 times. He mm -hmm. says, fear not. Fear not, guys. People are mad at me already because I'm I'm too mean. Because I keep pushing. Guys, you can't. Stop, stop, stop. It's all about fear. Who cares about the mark of the beast? Are you saved? Do you believe in Jesus Christ as the Messiah, the Son of God? If you believe that that man born of a woman here on earth is the actual true Son of God, he died on the cross to pay our sin debt, was buried and raised again, you're saved. That's what the Bible says. I don't care about any other man, what they say. The Bible told me this. And he backed it up in there lots with lots of other simple stuff that says you're saved if you believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Right? Mm -hmm. So right, why do right. we have to fear? Amen. That's what the enemy does. He well, I tell you, Kevin, you. one of the other things the enemy does is lie. And one of the reasons I'm suspicious is because if you look at 2 Thessalonians 2.8, uh, let, let me go ahead and just read this here. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, I'm going to start at verse 5. Remember ye not that when I was with you, I told you these things, and now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he now, who now letteth, will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. I'm going to stop right there for a second. They lie. And that's why I don't believe everything that they put up, just like with the whole NASA thing. You said, when you were talking there, you said, well, why would they make up this big old lie? That it, look what they did with NASA. And, and, and so if they constructed this big old lie, and, and the, the lie is manipulation by playing on people's fear. Listen, if I can make you afraid, I don't have to have a weapon in my pocket. But if I can make you afraid that I do, well, it sure. has the same uh, power as if I really did. And yeah, then if it goes on, let me just finish this and I'll let you speak. And with all deceivableness, deceivable, that means tricking. Of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved for this cause God shall send them what strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Look who he said sends the delusion. So <laughs> this is what I'm saying. When we as believers understand who is really running things. I don't get a. I don't care what they roll out tomorrow. If tomorrow, I mean this before the living God. If tomorrow they show a news report with aliens standing up there, I mean in flesh. I ain't talking about no costume. Standing up there talking about we from another world. They show the spaceship and all that. I'm not surprised. I know the spirit world is real. I know these devils can manifest. I know that they're real. But I know who I'm trusting in. I know that stuff is a lie, and I know it's from the devil. Period. But there, the Bible says there are scriptures that say that people are going to see things that are coming upon the earth and their hearts are going to fail them for fear. But I'm not afraid. So that's all I'm saying, uh, Kevin, is we got to remember these people are liars. Witchcraft, one of its greatest strengths 
is lies. Because when they lie, if, if you or I believe it, power is given to it and a spell is cast. We're operating under false information. Okay. I, I'm going to be the one to mention. I think we're getting way off track from the original question. We're adding more and more questions. All this was was whether or not I believe that CERN was a real thing. And I do. I mean, I've seen where they've had meltdowns and stuff. We don't understand what the technology they're using is appointed to do or anything else. Um, computers. There's a lot of things about computers that we don't understand. That doesn't mean that it isn't real. It doesn't mean that Satan doesn't lie about everything. Um, I'm not saying that he doesn't lie or that we should have any fear. It just I'm just saying that not everything isn't real because Satan lies. You know what I'm saying? Like not everything is a complete 100% conspiracy. Maybe parts of things that are real are conspiratorial. I get that, right? Um, and then we're going to touch now on witchcraft because we've brought this up and there's been quite a few times that witchcraft has been brought up. Um, I just want to point one thing out about witchcraft. They have absolutely no power. And even speaking of them as if they do have power, to me, almost gives them power because they have no power over me at all. None, 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 none. I personally know a witch, sister, um, who before I was reborn here, literally got in my face and she's a scary female i wouldn't want to fist fight her she would just kick my butt period i know it for a fact and she come up in my face is your god gonna have a problem with my god and i was like uh 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 no i don't think so um i was new here i just got here she was a friend of the family i didn't know what to expect and i was not reborn yet you have no idea how meekly this female speaks to me now very very meekly she's <laughs> never even thought about coming at me since i was reborn witches have absolutely no power do you know that witchcraft is in the same group of sins as like swearing and stuff it's just a sin it's like numerology or something they have no power they just think they do we have the power as believers and i think we all really need to know that I have people telling me that I need to pray to protect my house and stuff. I don't lock my doors. I haven't since I've been saved. I never lock my doors. They're open. If God can't stop a bad man from coming to my house, then God wants the bad man at my house. And I'm not really sure why. So when he comes in my house late at night, I'm not going to pick up a knife. And if he's going to kill me that night because I didn't lock my door, God knows it's happening. And I'm pretty sure the Holy Spirit's going to get the utterance to come out of me before I'm killed. It's going to be something that man needed to hear. Do you hear where I'm coming from? Because I don't fear either at all. And I don't fear witches. I don't fear the world. I don't fear the devil. Am I ever going to get scared again? You betcha. I'm just a human. But that that's going to be a temporal little fear that the Lord will always overcome. He always overcomes these things for us if we give him. The power to we have to give him the right if we get like you say sucked up in all of these lies that the world tells us like i i know nasa i understand nasa um i know that the the evil that was behind the men that created nasa were all evil but it's also the same guy that created walt disney you know this whole world is what fallen fallen all of it's fallen but Brothers and sisters, we have absolutely nothing to fear as believers. This world, Jesus said, you will be given up to be afflicted and killed, hated for his name. But he also prayed a prayer for us in John 17, where he said, Father, I ask you not to take them out of this world. And I'm paraphrasing, but I'm asking you, Father, to protect them from the evil right? Does that mean no bad thing will ever happen to Christians? Uh-uh. We're going to be afflicted and killed. But he will protect us from the evil. He will always be there for us. He's going to be there in that moment when we really need him. The Holy Spirit will be there for us. Because why? He will never leave us and never forsake us. But like you said earlier, God don't force us to do nothing. That's our choice, right? And he always wants us to know that he's always there. In the good, in the bad, and in the ugly, we're supposed to turn to God. Jesus said, and I'm going to end with this, 
that we have a very simple thing, in my opinion, as followers of Christ, on what we're supposed to do, doctrinally speaking, under all kinds of theologies and isms. Jesus made it easy. He said, go out, share the gospel with every creature, right? Share the gospel, make disciples, pray for the saints, and do not avoid fellowship because that's how we water the seeds that we plant. He told us to love God with all of our heart, soul, and mind. Now, for all of you guys, I sinned today. Okay, if you love God with all of your heart, soul, and mind, if you're following the commandments, if you're the under the law guy, he made it so easy. We're saved by believing on Jesus Christ. And he said, love God with all of your heart, soul, and mind. And share this gift with every human being that we have on this earth. Fear not. Amen. Amen. A couple of verses come to my mind from your uh, message. Um, um, greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. So why would I fear uh, the, the, the demons or evil when I have the Holy Spirit? And there's a verse in Revelation. Uh, it, it says, um, we overcome him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. So um, I think that's talking about the end times when uh, uh, people uh, are, there's this, uh, uh, Satan, of course, and the, the the evil in the world is trying to uh, uh, impose uh, the end on on the world. But we overcome him, Satan, by the blood of the Lamb. So it's the it's the the death of Jesus Christ that shed blood that gives us the victory. And the word of our testimony is our message about this uh, this blood saving blood. So, uh, yeah, the scripture should comfort us to know that we are uh, uh, greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. All right. Uh, we've been on this question a long time. Uh, I'd like to go to the next question unless someone has something more they need to say about this. Yeah, I had one other thing I wanted to say, right, which ahead. was I don't know if something got misconstrued when I was speaking. I am not talking about the church. I told you the Bible says 365 times we're to fear not. The world is powerless against their lies. The world is one being sucked in by all of this demonic junk that they're doing. And when they put out these lies, now I don't know what's real and what, what isn't. Do they have weapons? Yes, they have weapons. We've seen it. They have power that they can blow stuff up in an atomic second if they wanted to. That's not the issue. When I'm talking about the stuff that they're doing, we're witnessing lies right now before our eyes as this scamdemic continues. And as a result, the world is being decimated by their lies. Why? They don't trust in the Lord and they can't see through it. This is what I'm talking about, how powerful lies are. And I want to point you guys to just one film. If you go watch it, it was done by, um, what is his name? The guy, who's the guy that did Passion of the Christ? I know you guys know the director. Mel Gibson. Thank you. He did, it's called Apocalypto. It came out years ago. I don't think that there's any talking in that movie. You have to read all the subtitles. I but they're showing movie. you, I know, they're showing you what they do. How they trick all these natives to believe <laughs> something that they, which is basically the eclipse. And they think that these uh, king, the king and queen and their high priest are gods because they knew an eclipse was coming. The natives don't know it's coming. And when it happens, they all bow down and they're willing to allow themselves and their family and loved ones to be sacrificed to their devil gods because whether it was the devils they consorted with to tell them that. There was a uh, probably this is what they did. The uh, the eclipse is coming. They know it's happening and they use it against the people. And this is what I'm saying they're doing. So whether or not CERN is real to me is is irrelevant. If it is, so what? My God is still God. If it's not, it's a Jedi mind trick they're using against the world. This is my point. That's all I was trying to 
to say. All right, then. Brother Ben, can we go to the next question? Yes. The next question is, true or false, Israel is an example to the Gentiles as to how we are to live. I think that's Heather's question. Okay. So, Heather, if you submitted the question, uh, you will go last, okay? All right. So, who wants to go first then? Nobody. Oh. Go ahead. Ben. Sorry, I'm just hitting my little certainly false thing, and then I'm going to admit my name, Kev. And then I'm going to submit it. I have submitted. <laughs> <laughs> You've got me in submission. Um, I would have to say certainly false. I have no real biblical scholar knowledge on anything other than um, they've really screwed up everything for thousands of years. So I can't see how Israel would be an example on the world how to live. Um, oh, gee, maybe I should have went maybe only leaning or maybe unsure. Because they have actually followed their set of guidelines, right? They have, like, as far as Jewish people or whatever, Israel has, they've done their thing, you know? They, they, I don't agree with the way they live or how they do, like, the Jewish thing, right? Because I follow Christ, but... Um, Yeah, no, I'd have to stick with certainly false just because they haven't, <laughs> you know, they've denied my Lord their whole life. So whatever they're doing, it's got to be wrong. No, I'm going to stick with that one. I could be wrong, though. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. I agree. Um, I said certainly false. Uh, I, I mean, there are obviously some people from Israel from even going back to Abraham uh, all, all the way through uh, Abraham Isaac Jacob uh, the, the 12 tribes and Judah all of these uh, and the nation of Israel we can we can find examples of heroes of the faith but for the most part um, it's not a good example and even even uh, the fact that God el elected uh, to use certain people, uh, to accomplish his uh, plan, uh, which is primarily uh, the uh, genealogy to produce the Messiah. Um, he selected all these people for that purpose. It was his selection of them was not based on merit. Uh, so um, there it's not because they they were so, so great of uh, people. I mean, uh, if you look at uh, Abraham, obviously, he has quite a track record of, of uh, that is not uh, admirable. Uh, um, uh, they all do. Uh, look at look at uh, uh, Isaac, uh, what he did to uh, Esau, and, and uh, lying to his father and pretending to be uh, Esau. I mean, they, they, you can go on and on. And, and really, there's hardly any characters in the Bible at all that are admirable. I mean, Enoch comes to mind as one that uh, there's no uh, uh, blemishes on him as, as far as I is recorded. Um, but there, there's there's very few people, uh, whether it's Peter, uh, Paul, uh, John, the Apostle John, um, I don't know of anything that could be charged against him as being a bad example. But it's pretty rare. Most of the people are very flawed. David was a murderer and an adulterer. And so uh, really, uh, as far as them uh, give, giving being an example for us how to live, uh, no, I would say that's certainly false. Uh, okay, who wants to go next? I could go next. I don't have a whole ton to say. Um, well, I think... Uh, it depends. I, I see uh, Israel as kind of like our, a picture of our first birth, um, birth of the flesh. So it's temporary. It's imperfect. And uh, one thing that God did say to Israel in Exodus uh, nineteen five, he says to Moses, uh, now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people for the for all the earth is mine. 
and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you are to speak to the children of Israel. So they were intended, the covenant under which they were, uh, uh, the covenant of law, uh, they were supposed to be a witness for God to basically as a witness of, of, of his character, who he is um, and his ways. And, um, but again, fallen man is an imperfect witness and they were woefully uh, did not obey his voice or keep his covenant uh, 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 on the large. And so it's interesting that where he says, I'll keep, uh, you'll be a special nation for me, a, ki a kingdom of priests and holy, a holy nation. Peter says that in his epistle of the Jewish believers he's referring to. So in a temporal sense, they were a holy nation, a kingdom of priests. But again, it, that was in a temporal sense. Uh, it, uh, believers are, uh, in, a, in, in the eternal sense, we're, we're a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Um, but yeah, they were not, they were, again, it was, it, it was in perfect witness. Uh, that's why Christ had to come. And that's why even now, uh, even believers, uh, without the Holy Spirit, we would be, uh, we're even then we're still imperfect, but, uh, at least, uh, we have that we, we have, we're especially equipped and to do that in this day, if we yield to it, but again, we're still imperfect. And, um, what was the question again? <laughs> oh, how to live. Yeah. I mean, it, we're supposed to live holy. We're supposed to be separate. They're supposed to be a, a peculiar nation with peculiar laws. And just like believers are peculiar to unbelievers because we have the Holy Spirit. We're we're driven by uh, things that that defy um, the flesh, it, it, or at least we should. And so unbelievers see that and they say, "Well, it's, they're they're a peculiar people." Um, you know, and, and the, the the Hebrews had dietary laws, and we uh, we have spiritual laws in terms of we don't we don't eat certain spiritual and eating. It means kind of like uh, partaking in. Uh, things that are um, counter to God's uh, holiness, like, uh, you know, temporal sacrifices and things like that, or even uh, just other, you know, just things of the world that are not holy. Um, so I forgot where I was going to go with that, but I guess that's all I'll say for now. I don't, I, again, I don't think it was meant to be, a, it was actually, all I'll say one last thing that, you know, Israel was given the law, it says that, that, that you, if you obey these things, they will be well with you in the land. So again, it's very temporal in, in, in scope. Um, and it was never, it, the law was never, uh, uh, stated to give eternal life. It was a, a way of uh, conducting oneself. Um, uh, but again, without the Holy spirit, it's impossible to keep God's law. Um, even, uh, even, even to the letter, let alone the spirit of it. So I guess that's not all, all I would say. Okay. Thank you. All right. Sister Angel, what do you say? All right, so um, I'll have to uh, agree. Uh, I forget how the question was phrased. I think uh, uh, false. It was not uh, a picture of how we're supposed to conduct ourselves. I mean, I think uh, if we thought that that you know that if we took it as an example of how we're supposed to be living, we'd be doing a whole lot of things differently. We'd be stoning people still. And um, to me, I, I've always seen this as an example of uh, like, but it's almost. Yeah, kind of like a like how he said a, a, an example of our first birth, and I, I also I see it as a as an example of why we can't earn salvation and how brutal the conditions would be under which you know like like if we were trying to earn our salvation. I mean, I think a lot of us <laughs> could agree that the the Mosaic Law is very brutal, and I think it was um, uh, you know and that's how people try to charge God now. They don't understand the point of it. Uh, the point was to to illustrate um, the difference between law and grace. And so we are under grace and we're supposed to walk by the spirit. That's the spirit of, of the law, the spirit of um, the spirit of, of, of grace. Uh, like, because we're trying to um, save the rest of the world. We're trying to get them that get them the gospel. We're trying to be a witness to them and imagine how many people would, uh, people wouldn't want anything to do with it, with the gospel. If we were running around following the mosaic covenant right now, I mean, uh, it, you know, people, it, it, just the old Testament itself scares enough people off. Imagine if we were actually trying to carry it out in practice, which I mean, it's been a while, but I think like pastor Steven Anderson, I, I, I believe from what I remember, a lot of, especially a lot of his, his tirades against homosexuals, basically he, he would, he was saying that we need to be doing what they were 
that they, you know, would have been done to them in the Old Testament. And it's just like, wow, that wouldn't save anybody. But of course, he doesn't believe they can be saved, which is heresy. Um, but um, uh, this is what, you know, I think the last thing God wants us to do is live like that. It would not, you know, it's the love of God that draws them into salvation, not um, not that, not the, not the, the the law of sin and death, right? And um, uh, you know, it, it all it did was blind, you know, the 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 Israelites to uh, to live by it, and they puffed them up. And that's really, in a lot of ways, it's the opposite. It's the opposite. Although, you know, there are there are things that I think are good uh, guideposts for us in terms of. Um, the way we conduct ourselves, certain certain things we know God doesn't like um, um, when it comes to when it comes to you know what what sin is. And, uh, I think though that there's it's much greater. You know, Christ in, increased the law tenfold. You know, when he when he made it clear that if you were to so much look at a woman with lust, you committed adultery, because that's the spirit of the law. That's that's the um, I mean, that's we even have a phrase for it. We call we call it doing something in spirit, or you know, uh, your heart was in the right place, right? And uh, that's how I see uh, that's how I see really what God wants us to do as believers. Um, you know, Paul became all things to all people. He didn't uh, he didn't turn down um, uh, you know certain local customs and stuff. He was trying to minister to these people. And, they, and that would offend him. It would offend the people he's trying to minister to and, and kind of isolate him from those people uh, because it's, what's important is he was doing he was doing God's will. He was trying to reach out to people and win them to Christ. And so there's so much of, of, of things uh, that were were set out for the Jews that, that, that are um, really kind of counter counterproductive if you're trying to, to, to be an evangelist and a witness for Christ and, and try to try to you know help God on this search and rescue mission. So, uh, and you know, and I think I think it's actually you know quite a tragedy to see how many people um, still try to interpret it that way, to where you know ideally we would be doing X Y Z things and you know in the mosaic uh, in the mosaic law like as if we're supposed to still be carrying that out today but you know this you know darn modern society won't let us i don't think that's really god's purpose at all for us here because um like i said it, it's it's it would not be an appealing witness uh, for people I, I know myself uh, because i didn't understand it um what i saw in the old testament was was really the biggest hurdle for me ever coming to to believe because I didn't understand it. I didn't understand the purpose of it. It was as though I thought God didn't realize how harsh and ugly a lot of it was. I thought, I thought that, uh, that, that this was something he was that he didn't even realize, you know? And of course that was the point <laughs> actually, but I didn't realize that at the time. And, um, and yeah, so I would, I would just say false <laughs> false. Okay. Thank you. All right. Sister Heather, what's your answer? I don't think Sister Lisa answered. Well, oh yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, I forgot, You're the, you have to go last because you submitted the question. Thank you. Sister Lisa? Yeah, let's see. The The way the question is worded, true or false, it is, Israel is an example to the Gentiles as to how we are to live. If it had said, if, Israel was, I would have said, leaning true. Saying is, I would say, not yet. They will be. Uh, if we go to Romans 11. I say then, chapter, chapter 11, verse 1. I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. God hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew. What, ye not, that the scripture saith of Elias, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets, and dig thine, down thine altars. And I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. 
Even so then, at this present time also, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. And if by grace, it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But it be of works, then it is no more of grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. According as it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should see not, and ears that they should not hear unto this day. And David said, let their table be made a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened that they may not see and bow down their back away, always. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. But rather through their fall, salvation is coming to the Gentiles or to provoke them to jealousy. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them, the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? For I speak to you, Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh and might save some of them, or if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? For if the first root be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou, being a wild olive tree, wert grafted in among them, and with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree, boast not against the branches. But if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Thou wilt say then, branches were broken off, that I might be grafted in. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. And thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. Or if God spared not the natural branches, take heed, lest he also spare not thee. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fell severity, but toward thee goodness. If thou continue in his goodness, otherwise Thou shalt be cut off. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in. And God is able to graft them in again. Or if thou wert cut off the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted in contrary to nature in a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted in their own olive tree? For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And so all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, there shall come out of Sion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes, but as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. For the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. For as ye in times past have not believed God, yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief. Even so have these also now not believed that through your mercy they may obtain mercy. For God hath concluded them all in unbelief that might have mercy upon all. That he might have mercy upon all. Oh, the depth and riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, or who hath been his counselor, or who hath first given to him and it shall be recompensed unto him again. For of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever. Amen. The reason I read that is that most Christians don't even know this is in their Bible. 
The Lord has not cast away his people. One day all of Israel, I just read it to you, shall be saved. Now, I, I always point to this because we forget that it's in this book that he said, don't get puffed up. What happened to Israel was by election, by the designation of God so that the world might be saved. Yet he always reserved for himself a remnant, as it says in the beginning of this book. There have always been a believing remnant of his people. And those people were the first church. Gentiles became uh, believers as a result of Paul going to all the world, preaching the gospel. And his other faithful saints who were originally the Hebrews. And they took the gospel to the world. Yes, there were Gentiles intermingled as they came into the faith. And this is why you see the contention between Paul and Peter when Peter started courting the Judaizers and, and fell back into some Judaizing. And Paul rebuked him to his face because he was to be blamed. And the Lord dealt with him when he stretched out the sheet and showed him in a vision that all of those creeping things that were on that he told him to take, kill, and eat. And he said, not so, Lord, for no unclean thing has passed my lips. And the Lord told him three times, he said, what I've made clean, don't you dare call unholy. That was referring to the Gentiles, that they were to be reminded, don't you get puffed up, because this is why y'all got cut off to begin with. So uh, this is all in the providence of the Lord and what he has set in order that it might come. It is blindness in part. So this is a difficult question to answer because it is, it is by the election of God that these things have even transpired. And I told you, y'all need to read Revelation 2 and 9 and Revelation 3 and 9 because the people that you think are the people are not the people. And the waking up is already happening, is transpiring right before your very eyes. That whole, I can't breathe and can these dry bones live? He's equal 37. I'm telling you, you go, it's going to be an astonishment to the world when this happens. It's already happening before your eyes right now. And people don't know what they're looking at. And this is one of the reasons all hell is breaking loose. I just see pride. I just see everyone full of pride. I don't see awakening yet. I just see so much pride. And it's just sort of like the spirit. If anything, and you're right, because it's like the racial pride is waking up, which was the, <laughs> that's where I see it could have well, a common. If you think if you've been beaten down to nothing and told you were nothing and you ain't never going to be nothing and you had your name turned into a byword and all these other things. One of the first things you might have to get back is some pride because you've been beaten down to nothing. And that's and I'm not saying it's going to stay there. It can't stay there because the correction that's going to take place. It's like um, it's like when you start to heal and a scab comes on that wound. That's crusty and it's hard. And eventually that has to come off for that new skin and the softness that's there to come forward. So there's going to be some bumps and some bruises and some mistakes and some missteps. That's what happens. If you look at Ezekiel, I, I encourage y'all to read Ezekiel 37 when the prophet asks and he says, can these dry bones live? They are dead. They are gone. They don't even remember their name. They don't even know who they are. How are you going to come back from that? Only God can do that. And there's a reason that Revelation 2 and 9 is there and 3 and 9. Y'all can't pretend like it's not there. And you can't pretend. No, we should talk about that on Saturday, actually, because I've, I've, heard, I've heard that a lot. But I, had, I just, I don't know, I see it differently. But I do see what you're saying, um, um, that, uh, that, like, like. I understand your your the connection between the dry bones. I see where I see where you're going with that. Well, I did want to ask you though, with all of Israel being saved, what do you think that means? I mean, I think it means exactly what it means. So there that, is like, coming all a day, of Israel, every last Hebrew is going to be a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because what's going to happen is the same thing that happened in the foreshadow of Egypt. If you notice, they did not cry out for a new Pharaoh. They cried out to the Lord in their affliction and he heard them and he sent the deliverer. And this is what the Lord is waiting upon his people to let go of all them damned false gods and stop crying out to Buddha and Muhammad and Allah and all this other stuff. 
and they're going to cry out to the Lord Jesus Christ. And it will only be then that they will be delivered. And when they are, it will be mighty. And the Bible says the same way they came in is the same way they're going out by ship. It's right there in the book. I, I, uh, there's a documentary I want to show you at some point. Um, um, but um, but with all of Israel, you don't mean every Israel. Every, like you mean all of Israel in that present moment, at that in that last moment that's actually there, right? If they're alive some, and they're drawing yeah. breath on this earth, they are going to come to faith in the Lord Jesus right. Christ. Right. I've heard sort of a lot of people use that to just like puff as if the Jews almost they don't even need us because. Uh, and whoever you think the Jews are doesn't matter. The point is, is that as if as if they don't need the gospel because all of them will be saved anyway. So so that's but I know that's not what you mean. But uh, no, that's in what, Galatians uh, yeah. six, it talks about the believing remnant, and they're yes. referred to yes. as the Israel of God. Yes, that that's is what I'm, believers yes. who are actually physically Hebrew. He still has a lineage, and he yes. has not cast them away. Now, when the church gets removed. There's the reason the 144,000 male Hebrews that are virgins are going to be the ones disseminating gospel along with the angel of the Lord and all these other things are going to begin to transpire because the church is gone. And the main, if you guys read Joel, you will see if you read Amos, if you read Obadiah, he's coming for his people. These same scholars that I told you they put blinders on themselves and us don't want you to know the reason that he's coming. It is to get his people. It's in your Bible. I'm not going to pretend like it's in, not in there, and you shouldn't either. We've been told wrong. And this is what repentance is, changing of the mind. When we hear the truth, as Brother Luke is always saying, only, or how does that go, Brother Luke? It says, when an honestly mistaken man finds out he's mistaken, he will either cease to be mistaken or no longer be honest. No, I, I agree that, that they, he's coming back to get his people, I th especially if, it, if his preacher rapture is true. That's got to be what it is. I think well, he's coming back for his bride first, yes. and then his immediate attention turns to the apple of his eye, which is Israel. And if you're looking at it, they're his timepiece. If you're looking at the wrong people, you're looking at the wrong time piece. That's all I got to say. All right. Thank you. Um, well, Heather, you wrote the question. So I'm. can you provide an answer? Actually, I can. And I just want to say thank you to Sister Lisa, because I had written in my notes that I wanted to read Romans 11, 26. And I'm a terrible reader. So I very much appreciate the fact that you read the whole chapter. That was amazing. Um, he, my, I answered certainly false. We are not supposed to follow the example of Israel. If we were supposed to follow their example, then God would have never set them aside in order to save us. That being said, God is not fooled. and. God knew from the very beginning, because I very much believe that he knows the end from the beginning. God knew from the very beginning what his plan was and how he was going to manage to save us. And because of that, he wrote in scripture the examples of these people. One of my favorites is David. Um, David was a murderer, an adulterer, and in very many cases, he was a horrible father. Um, just, I, I encourage you, if you haven't read the stories in, in Kings and and all that, you go read that. That's It's so, it's crazy, the things that happened in his life. But he's also called the man after God's own heart. Why? Because regardless of the fact that he had a fallen nature, just like all of us, he believed and he had faith. And I believe that he was saved because of that. Um, yes, God is going to save Israel. And I 
Oh, it, it it makes me so happy to think of that because I I have a brother in Christ, and I'm not going to say any names, but um, he has a theory or had a theory on people getting saved and the way that they get saved. And I think that it's a beautiful thing that God knew that he was going to need to save the Gentiles. So he set aside the Israelites long enough for us to deal to deal with us and to bring us to him and bring us to love him. And then has never forgotten about Israel. I, I, that's so encouraging to me because if God never forgot about Israel, even though they sinned constantly, just like me, he never forgot about them. So he'll never forget about me. And it just, it, it blows my mind that God's ways are not our, our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. And they're so much higher and so much bigger and so much better and when you try and understand it, it can totally blow your mind. But um, I think Sister Lisa said it very well and answered it pretty much how I wanted to answer it. So that's pretty much all I have to say. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, we've uh, we've gone past our normal time, so I guess we can't take any more questions, but. Uh, we can give our, our summaries uh, closing can, remarks now. But, Luke, Kevin? can I just add one little thing to what Heather just said? Yeah, please yeah. do. Because I think the impression I was getting is that the Jews are going to get saved because that's God's chosen people. And he chose them for a purpose so that we could be saved. Like through their never getting the picture, we're able to get the picture. And so I would just like, I like to throw a little scripture in there, right? Because I had a sister teach me man context and stuff. By shout out, Sister Renee. I love you. Um, context to this, this can be my summary even, is Matthew 24 is that time we're all kind of talking about, right? And we'll just go with this. That's starting at 2412. It says, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. We're probably there. And then it said, but he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. And I looked that word up, saved, and that's not salvation. That's protection. And Jesus said, don't take them from the world, Lord. Protect them from the evil. And then verse 14 says, oh, I love this. I love this. Because I wept so much for the lost, I didn't understand why should I be saved. <clears throat> and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. All will hear the true gospel of the Lord. And like with 144,000, and what? The, the angel and the two witnesses that go out and they preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, the truth, supernaturally to all the world. And just like Jesus was down in hell there for three days and he talked to everybody and he told everybody down there the truth about Jesus. Because he also said that none would be lost except for that one so that you know what? This prophecy could be fulfilled. Son of perdition. Um, the book of Daniel says many will wake to eternal shame and contempt. And some to eternal life. Those are through Jesus Christ. The book of the Lamb. Our Lord. Our Savior. Right? The Messiah. I'll end with that, guys. I love you all, and I thank you so much for having me on here tonight. It's been truly a blessing. I was at the end of my rope. I was ready to shut everything down and stop because I felt that I'm only hurting people because I'm too pushing on the truth of Jesus Christ. And I'm not nice enough because when I talk to you, you can hear me that I love you. But if I text, I don't sound like I love you. I sound mean. 
And it breaks my heart because like I tried to get my point across to the world and to the people that Jesus Christ is real and it's so simple to be saved and save other people through the Holy Spirit saving them, right? Through us. And tonight, you just, you have no, well, I'm sure you do. I was going to say you have no idea. But thank you, brothers and sisters. Thank you, Luke, for inviting me here tonight. Thank you so much. And to everybody, oh, this is very good because you have a large, wider audience. To everybody out there in the YouTube world, I'm sorry, personally, me, Church for the Truth, my name's Kev. I'm sorry for the times that I get out, out of hand. I'm sorry, Lisa, for cap locking. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, everybody. I love y'all, and I do what I do here because I love you all. Um, and I don't mean to be overly aggressive or mean or anything. I really do just love y'all. Everybody in chat tonight, too. So I just wanted to say that. Thank you. All right. Okay, brother. Thank you very much. Uh, very wonderful closing remarks. And uh, let's ask Sister Heather to, to go next. I just want to thank you guys for letting me be on here. I am honored and privileged and humbled to be invited. Um, I tend to be a little bit shy. I trip over my words a little bit, but, and I'm much better at text, unlike my brother, Kevin, <laughs> but, um, I, I have a passion for Jesus and I have a passion for seeing people saved and my heart is love and everything in me cries th with the love of Jesus. And I just, I want everyone to hear that and know that. And I just pray that this message reaches to somebody who needed to hear it tonight. And that I, I pray that God would make our words edifying. And I know that we're finishing up, but I believe that God can use, if God can speak through a donkey, he can speak through somebody who stumbles over their words like me. Um, and I just want to thank you guys. I think it's been an amazing time and I've I've needed this. I've needed to be able to speak about Jesus and I've needed this in my life over the last few months. Um and I just that's it. I just want to say thank you for letting me be here. Okay, sister. We're very happy you are with us and uh look forward to you uh, continuing in the Friday night program. Uh, Sister Angel, your summary. Sorry, I was unmuting. Uh, yeah, it was really great. Uh, really uh, helped um, take my mind off of the stresses of this week. So I appreciate it, guys. And it was really wonderful to have uh, uh, Kevin and Heather on. Um, you guys really. Uh, well, I came with it for your first time on the panel, so that was wonderful. I had never gotten to speak to you, Kevin, but uh, I love your accent. It is, a, it, I, I, I can't help it. I find Canadian accents just adorable. So um, <laughs> I love it. Uh, I, I'm not sure what part of Canada you're from, but, uh, but it, it's just it was wonderful to have you here. And I, um, I think I had seen you on a on a video, maybe um, on a, a certain other channel at one point, uh, and so I recognized your voice immediately. But, but uh, I uh, just heard about wonderful things about you from Heather. And uh, I'm also really glad that Heather was able to finally uh, come on. I hope it wasn't uh, wasn't too nerve wracking. It's not it's not too uh, it's not too bad once you get used to it, once you get used to speaking publicly. But um but you guys did really great and neither one of you sounded nervous, so that's uh, that's a blessing. And uh, hopefully you guys will uh, will be back on again um regularly so uh but i love you guys and uh we will see you tomorrow night okay thank you speaking of tomorrow night sister lisa give us a summary and, and tell us what's going on tomorrow you know i was talking to sister angel uh sister angel don't <laughs> don't run away oh no you okay. you were saying earlier when we were texting back and forth what was the topic 
because I asked you oh. to hold the other one until next week because I'm inviting Sister Renee on for next week. But tomorrow, we, you were saying the, the topic that you want to discuss you thought might be a good idea. That was it uh, with uh, uh, John Titor? Yes. The, the, yes. Okay. So, and things surrounding all that. Now, it's John T Titor or Tigor. I don't know how he says it. I've only ever seen it written. But uh, it's a sort of a. Uh, now, I'm not, I don't believe in time travel. If anybody who has heard of him, it's immediately thinking I believe in time travel. No, I don't believe in time travel. But certain predictions that he made, he's like a guy that I, I thought he called into Coast to Coast, but I, I'm not sure if he called in and posted to the Coast to Coast forum or if he just uh, posted to the forum. But anyway, he got very famous on the Internet um, in the late 90s um, by claiming to be a time traveler from like the year 2036 or something like that. And uh, he had all these predictions regarding uh, our upcoming future at the time. And one of the things he were to give us sort of like a civil war of organization of the US. I wanted to talk about the step he said because some people, there's been some strange rumor that's persisted uh, ever since that I guess that, that, he, that people thought he was Donald Trump there at the time. Right mm. now, I'm not saying that I think that's true. I, I'm just, I, I think something's afoot here. Like, I they like to drop little hints about their plans in all kinds of crazy different ways. So, I'm not sure if this was sort of like a little psyop to drop hints about, about things to come or what, but I thought it would be interesting to discuss some of what some of the very, uh, very like strangely accurate predictions, um, he made, at least in terms of what we're seeing now. And, um, and just that, that asks also as a lead in to discuss some of the stuff that we're seeing now and what's happening and what could happen. So uh, hopefully you guys will uh, will tune in for that. But, uh, you know, uh, and perhaps Ben might want to discuss a little bit about time travel because I know he's had he's had some theories or, or some musings about it before. And that might be interesting, too. So uh, but yeah, that's that's pretty that's pretty much pretty much it. I don't know a whole whole lot about the topic. There's a lot more you could know. I think my husband knows a whole lot about it so i'm going to pick his brain a little bit more for it but uh, some of it's hard to find now it's kind of like they they scrubbed it from youtube so i'm trying to mm. go back and get as much information as i can but i know that the basics and uh it'll be enough to, to lead into a discussion so okay there you guys there you guys have it that's going to be uh the first hour tomorrow and then the second hour i'm going to let ben just talk the whole second two hours. He's better be ready. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He can tell. Yeah. Yeah. I think that'll you see, be he's good still idea. quiet. He's not saying anything. So I'm going to yeah. get well, in. If Danny's talking for two hours, I'm staying up late to listen. <laughs> <laughs> right. I know. He says interesting things when he finally so talks. All of you guys that are listening, if you don't know about the broadcast, it's tomorrow on my channel for the Most High Jesus is Late Night with East and Friends. And Ben is my producer. Sister Angel is always uh, one of my friends there. So is Ben, but he rarely says anything. We're trying to get him to come out of his shell. <laughs> and then we invite guests over. Next week will be Sister Renee. And we're going to talk about uh, Monarch um, programming. And so she's doing her research on that. And I know Sister Angel's probably already ready to go on that. We talked about Monarch <laughs> Butterflies week before last, and it kind of tricked everybody. We weren't trying to trick anybody, but they thought that's what we were going to be talking about. But we decided to wait on that and let her talk about her sweet little butterflies, which were actual butterflies week before yeah. last. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, tomorrow we're going to talk about that. And I may, I may, I still haven't decided yet. Um, well, yeah, I'm going to talk a little bit, not a whole lot about transgenders. It's not going to be a rage against them or anything like that. It's just something that I see coming that I kind of want to tell you guys. So when you see it, you can remember that you heard it from me, that this is what I perceive, not a prophecy. I don't do that. I'm not a prophet. Something I think I see coming and, uh, it may happen after we're taken out of here. I don't know, but there's something I see coming and I want to share with you guys tomorrow. I could be wrong, but I don't think so, especially not with the way the whole agenda is just coming forward and everything, absolutely everything, every aspect of life. So that's going to be tomorrow night's broadcast. Join us at 8 p.m. Pacific, uh, 11 p.m. Eastern, and we're going to have fun, fellowship, praise, and we just talk about things. We're all believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we talk about uh, whatever comes to mind, whatever we want to discuss. So please join us tomorrow night. Thank you. God bless you all. Okay. Thank you.
Yeah, it, it, I think your uh, Saturday night program is uh, it's so much fun. It, it, it actually rivals Fun Fellowship Friday for, for the amount of fun you have. Um, the subject uh, tomorrow is a fascinating subject. I, I watched a bunch of videos on that, uh, I don't know, a year or so ago. Um, it, John Tudor, the, the time traveling, the... Uh, um, uh, little Baron Trump, the the book about the last president, all that stuff just blew my mind. It was just amazing. I don't I don't know how much how much of all that you'll you'll cover, but it's a it was um, mind boggling to me. Uh, Brother Ben, uh, you get the you know, final remarks here. Yeah, if you want me to talk for two hours, I hope you're interested in the uh, history and future of TCP IP, Internet Protocol. No, I'm teasing. Um, yeah, I actually looked a lot for this t John Tidor stuff and, and, and Trump about four years ago. Um, and I, I'm looking at my notes now. I, th I do have a lot to say and share. Um, and so, yeah, I'll be, uh, be, I'd be i love to talk about that more because there's a lot of, a lot of weird things going on there and a lot of dots that I've connected, but I haven't connected at all. Um, but it, it's definitely, uh, definitely interesting and uh, something I, I'd be very much interested in talking more about. Um, but other than that, uh, uh, Heather and Kevin, you guys did awesome on your first debut and no one's, uh, no one's better at, at, at stammering and tripping over their own tongue like me. So if I can do it um, and I've been around this long, uh, you guys can surely, uh, you'll, you'll surely do better than me. So um, it all it takes is that, you know, something to share, something that you have to say, and you guys definitely delivered on that tonight. Um, the, the insights you guys provide. So it was really great to have you both. Yes, it okay. is. <clears throat> and I'll just warn you sometimes, like Luke's thinking here right now, how do we shut this guy up? Never mind, he has something to add. Um, exactly. Appreciate. Um, yeah, and I heard you. <laughs> I really appreciate being asked and stuff. Thanks, guys. All right. Well, I'm <clears throat> all right then. Uh, it was a wonderful time with everybody tonight, and it's times like this that uh, gives us a respite from uh, the, the you know, the problems that we see in the world uh, every day. So uh, these are really, um, I know how much this um, congregation, uh, these programs mean to me, and I'm very happy that I, I, so many people say how important this is to them. So uh, I'd say tonight we accomplished that. Uh, good time by all, enlightenment for everybody, uh, edification, fellowship, and a lot of fun. So um, um, so join uh, Elisa on her channel tomorrow night, and then don't forget to join us Sunday for our um, on this same channel for our Sunday uh, church service. That's 5 p.m. Eastern time. Thank you, everybody in the chat room and everybody here in the panel for participating. Bless you all in the name of our great Savior, God, Jesus.